And he cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth. And when he cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Kingdom come. There followed hail and fire mingled with blood. Wesley. There fell a great star from heaven, burning as if it were a lamp. And I beheld and heard an angel. Not again. Saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. <laughs> That's enough, Wesley. You know what the doctor said about overexerting yourself. You pull out the IV tube. It's in the Revelation of St. John. All of it. I can go on. There's more. You're my pastor, Norman. I can tell you. I see things. Divine prophecies. Nightmares, Wesley. You've had them before. That's why you're in the hospital. Not nightmares, pastor. Visions. Visions. I see an eagle. An eagle carrying a golden lance. I know, Wesley. And the great bat. Dark. Shrieking. They're fighting. Legions, legions of the mighty drowning in a lake of fire, washed up on waves of burning sand. I know, Wesley. You've told me before. And a flag in the shape of a man, red, white, and blue. But the red is blood red. The man is tattered and torn, lost behind a wall of fire. Now, please, Wesley, I'm trying to help. Don't make me call the nurse again. Seven thunders will utter their voices, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Babylon falls, Norman. Be the one who listens to me. <laughs> Wesley, you shouldn't be getting out of bed. Nurse, nurse. The sands <laughs> run out, and I, <laughs> I can do nothing but wait in my own filth for sleep to finally claim me. Someone must act. Oh, jeez, Mr. Dodds. Doctor, Mr. Dodds has pulled out his IVs again. Wesley, please, take comfort. There is peace waiting. Of course there is, Norman. For me, not <coughs> for you. Nurse, 100 cc's of Demerol. Quickly, please. There, there, Mr. Dodds. Let's get you back into bed, and we'll fix up something that'll help you sleep. Hear me, Norman. I owe you much. Yet I have nothing to leave you save insight. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. Just hold still, Mr. Dodds. This'll bring you pleasant dreams. Be my witness, Pastor. It's all there in the Bible. The end is near. Read the book. Wesley, this isn't the time. Read. It might help if you do what he says. Uh, all, all right. Uh, First Corinthians. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. There was more, but Wesley Dodds never heard it. In the end, he was listening to another voice. A voice, I hope, that brought him peace. A fine eulogy, Pastor McKay. Oh, thanks. And thank you, Mrs. Waters, for coming out to fill out the crowd. Wesley Dodds deserved to have people at his funeral. And people from the church was all I could think of. From the looks of things, I'd say he didn't have many friends. Not at the end, anyway. Did you know him long? Not really. He came to the church toward the end of his life, questioning what there was to believe in these days. I wish now I'd had better answers. Well, it's nice seeing you. You know, the three of us shared quite a few dinners in our apartment. My wife, Ellen, God rest her soul, used to tease Wesley about living in the past. That's nice, but it's getting late. The next minute, she was practically begging him to tell another tale of his glory days. Glory days? Yes, apparently he was quite an adventurer in his early days. 
Back then, his dreams were of yesterday's, not tomorrow's. Of bright times, not barbaric. What sort of adventurer? Hmm? Oh, well, a costumed adventurer. He called himself the Sandman. He was a superhero. Huh! Superheroes! You'll excuse the expression. I can't say I think much of these costume types anymore. The water on my block was shut off for a week after the last fight they had. Newspapers call the fights rumbles, makes them sound dramatic. But they're just brawls, gang wars. Huh! Superheroes! There hasn't been a real superhero in the world since Superman vanished. And that was years ago. I can't say I think much of this character who took his place, this... this Magog, or whatever he calls himself. Nothing but a thug, if you ask me. Hey, Pastor, can we give you a ride? Yeah, no thanks. The rain should be clearing up. I think I'll walk. I lost my faith in an interesting way. For years, I'd believed. Believed in God, in salvation, in the idea of being holy. I believe that an educated man who does not believe in miracles is not a realist. Oh, I bought it all. But sometime around the turn of the century, I lost it. No single act drove me to despair, not even when my beloved Ellen passed on. It was more the constant reminders, day in and day out, that we were insignificant, that humans didn't matter. Humanity seemed to dwindle as the world teetered on the brink. No one seemed to notice. People like Mrs. Waters feel the frustration, but they don't really understand. No one does, except maybe for Wesley Dodds, and now he's gone. Before the end, before the bitterness overcame him, before he started seeing things, we'd go for walks on streets just like this. For hours, he'd moan about the end of things like the Olympic Games and Nobel Prizes. Collectible souvenirs, memora... Hey, Pops, check out the merchandise. Huh? Uh, no thanks. You can't pass this up. Look, I got a genuine AM-FM radio from before the turn of the century. It still works. Check it out. The United Nations today enacted more measures to curb metahuman violence around the globe. Secretary General Wormwood promised swift and effective action to deal with metahuman activities. However, a recent poll shows that 91% of U.S. citizens believe the new measures will be ineffective in stopping the frequent outbreaks of metahuman... You like? No, thank you. Oh, come on, Pops. I, I got a signed game ball from the very last World Series ever played back in 2002. 200 bucks and it's yours. Uh, sorry, no. Oh, okay, 150. What's the matter? Too steep for you? Uh, how about a signed copy of... Under Sometimes Under Wesley would ambush complete strangers and ask them how much they missed the concept of human achievement. I don't know what surprised me more, the, the weirdness of the question or all the people who seemed to know what he was talking about. I tried to argue with him. I joked that he was grousing like any old codger unable to appreciate the new generation. He wouldn't laugh. He insisted that human initiative began to erode the day people asked the new breed to face the future for them. He mocked their worth, these newcomers, and spoke instead of legends gone, of costume champions who had, in his day, inspired human achievement, not belittled it. He swore he'd never forget the world they came from. He wanted them to be remembered. He wanted them to live again. <laughs> Good God, I'm starting to ramble as badly as he did. Feeling a little lightheaded, too. Maybe I need food. Good afternoon, citizen. Welcome to Planet Krypton. How may I serve you? <laughs> Good God, I'm starting to ramble as badly as he did. Feeling a little lightheaded, too. Maybe I need food. Good afternoon, citizen. Welcome to Planet Krypton. How may I serve you? Good Lord, what is this place? It used to be a deli. Now it's a Planet Krypton. Super food served by superheroes. We got all the oldies here. The Flash, Martian Manhunter, and check out the decor. That's a real battering up there belong to the Batman himself. At least, that's what the manager tells us. Planet Krypton? Uh, 
come on. Don't you get it? Pop culture references, very retro, very in. No offense, but you look like you've been around long enough to remember the old timers. Batman, Fishman, Aquaman. Right, that's it. Me? I've never even seen those guys. I hear they're all retired now anyway, which is cool by me. I wouldn't want the real deal coming around and showing me up in this outfit. <laughs> Although it's not a bad job on these tights, huh? They tell me I make a pretty good green... Uh, what do you call it? Arrow... Lantern. Excuse me? Green Lantern. You're dressed like Green Lantern. Whatever. Who cares? They're all out to pasture now anyway. A friend of mine cared. Whatever you say. So, can I find you a table? I can seat you anywhere but Supergirl's section. That's always packed. Hey! I don't know why that place bothers. I must be thinking about Wesley Dodds too much. Wesley Dodds, the Sandman, went to his grave without one grain of faith in the future. And the saddest part was, he wasn't alone. With each passing day, hope for tomorrow has become more and more precious, a commodity among everyday people. Still, I tried to keep the faith and keep to the scriptures. According to the word of God, the meek would someday inherit the earth. But God never accounted for the mighty. Who's fighting? Who cares? I do. I mean, someone ought to. This is Chuck Kochman reporting live for Bold Copy from Midtown Metropolis, where a rumble has just broken out between two groups of metahumans. Like dust devils coalescing from the tightening air, a handful of colored figures suddenly appeared in the sky, on the ground, on the walls, and roofs of buildings. They're beautiful, they're perfect, their skin is unblemished, the movements of their muscles like the ripples of tectonic plates. Some of the metahumans move too fast to be photographed, but I've already seen the superpowered female known as Nightstar flying overhead, firing bolts of rippling purple-colored heat from her fingertips at a gigantic horned robot codenamed Tusk. I've also seen the metahuman known as Lightning unleash white streams of static at the infamous bull-headed monster called the Minotaur. The fire-wielding Phoebus is here, and so is 666 in his dark armor and darker tattoos. Okay, Sammy, bring it in for my close-up. Ready? Here goes. Three, two. Once metahumans were known as heroes, but today our world is filled with their children and grandchildren. They number in the nameless thousands. Progeny of the past, inspired by the legends of those who came before, but not the morals. You, sir, what's your name? It's McKay. Uh, tell that guy to put down his camera and help me. This little girl is hurt. And what's your opinion of this latest superhero battle? They're not superheroes. They're thugs. They're not fighting for the right. They fight simply to fight. Now help me. This girl needs help. The superhumans boast that they've all but eliminated the supervillains of yesteryear. Small comfort. They move freely through the streets, through the world. They are challenged, but unopposed. They are, after all, our protectors. And cut. That was great, Chucky. Yeah, yeah. Did you get good shots of Nightstar? You kidding? That babe eats the lens. This is gonna look primo on the 6 o'clock news. Ah, well, come on. Let's get out of here before we get hurt. Help! Help! That little girl, are you all right? Oh, my leg hurts. Oh. Just stay still. Oh. The fight's moving off a little. I try to comfort the little girl, and I try to console myself, too. I tell myself that this, too, shall pass. That humans still have a chance to reclaim a world rightfully theirs while it still exists. That in the face of superhuman might and superhuman odds, time has not yet run out for humanity. I am wrong. Mister, do you feel the ground moving? I think that's just the battle. No! It's something else!
we interrupt our regularly scheduled program to bring you this special report. There has been a nuclear explosion in Kansas. Bold Copy has exclusive footage of this terrible tragedy tonight at 11. And there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. Pastor? And he opened the bottomless pit, and the sun and the air were darkened. Pastor? Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. He... Pastor McKay? He... I... Are you all right? One minute you were reading to us from the story of Joseph, and the next you were shouting out like... like... Well, I don't know what. Is what you said in the Bible? Uh, Revelations. It's from the Revelation of St. John. I uh, Forgive me, everyone. This, this isn't what I wanted to. <laughs> forgive me. And, and, and please excuse me. That's, that's the end of the sermon. As they leave, they shy from my gaze. My congregation has trusted me for years. And today, I betrayed them. In mourning, unable even to fathom the news that has stopped the world, they came to me seeking encouragement that I cannot give. The news, the explosion in Kansas, Wesley Dodds knew. The visions he had, the prophecies, the dreams. I thought he was senile, insane. But if he was, then so now am I. His dreams are now mine, and they are visions of utter despondence. The golden eagle, the dark-winged bat, the man behind the wall of red flames. I see them all. Wesley wanted someone to act, but what can anyone do? Kansas proved it. Thanks to the superhumans, the end is near. And the word of God is so very far away. I have need of you, Norman McKay. And now the visions talk to me. I have gone mad. Partly. In fact, your sanity may be paramount to mankind's survival. Sanity? I just saw you walk through that stained glass window as if it wasn't there. And and your skin, it, it's as white as snow or death. And that green robe flapping around, there's no breeze. And then you tell me I'm sane? You, you've got to be another vision. I am the spiritual continuation of one that has been of your kind. Those of your plane who know me, call me the Spectre. Even as I stand before you, an act of unspeakable evil has begun to manifest. Armageddon is fast approaching, but you know this. You have the dreams. You see into my mind, my soul? Uh, are you an angel? Of a sort. A higher power has charged me with the task of punishing those responsible for this coming evil. Long ago, I would have judged swiftly with clarity, but my faculties are not what they once were. In order to carry out my task, I must anchor myself to a human soul who seeks justice. I don't understand. You will. Can you push back that, that green hood? I can hardly see your face. You need not see my face, Norman McKay. Look into the face of chaos. Your answers lie there. If this is true, if this is not some new delusion, then why me? Because I came too late in search of the dreamer Wesley Dodds. He saw tomorrow with a power he did not understand, but passed to you nonetheless. Now your dreams will guide us both. In order to fulfill my mission, we must both witness the events that will lead to Armageddon. Come with me. But, but I can't simply leave. My congregation depends on me. They look to me for guidance, especially now, after Kansas. Now your dreams will guide us both. In order to fulfill my mission, we must both witness the events that will lead to Armageddon. Come with me. But, but I can't simply leave. My congregation depends on me. They look to me for guidance, especially now, after Kansas. 
Come, Norman McKay. You will serve them in ways you cannot yet imagine. Very well, but, but explain this to me. If you're truly a being of great power, how is it that you can find no way to avert this catastrophe? That is not my task. Once, Earth boasted other saviors who might have stemmed the tide of destruction. But as you will see, they are no longer the solution. They are in many ways the problem. How did you do that? We're, we're not in a church anymore. We're somewhere else now. Where, where, where are we? What do you see? Why, I see a Midwestern farmland, a, a bright blue sky, wheat fields, a half-finished barn, a tractor, even a pen full of farm animals. This looks like Kansas, but, but that's not possible. Not after the explosion. This can't be. Hey, boy, stop that. You'll spook the cattle. This can't be Kansas. There is no need to lower your voice. We cannot be seen or heard. Not even by him. That farmer, he, he looks familiar to me. But, th but there's something not quite right. Uh, the beard, maybe. And the hair's too gray. Still, I feel like I've seen him before. You have. My God, he's pounding those nails into the barn with his bare hands. Though he is not of this world. Hup. He He's lifting that tractor up with one hand. He came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. You know him by a name he has not used in ten years. Superman. Not since he began his self-imposed exile. I remember. He left Metropolis. Something happened. There was a mass murder at the Daily Planet. A madman named the Joker filled the place with gas, killing everyone. And then the metahuman called Magog killed the Joker. And there was a trial. Your memory serves. Whatever happened drove Superman here, but my God, he, he's so alone. Not always. Hello, Clark. I mean, hello, kal -El. Hello, Diana. Haven't seen you in months. That woman, her star-spangled costume, is that... Diana, a, a princess, princess among the Amazons. In man's world, she is known as... Wonder Woman. She's beautiful. But I read about her when I was so much younger. Even Superman has aged a little. But she looks the same as ever. Time passes in different ways for different beings, Norman McKay. And though they do not age, immortals feel the weight of years as heavily as do men. What brings you to the farm? The vain hope that you're not still here. But where is here? This can't be Kansas. Kansas is gone. Attend. You're needed, Clark. Don't call me that. I mean, Cal. You're needed back in the world. Kansas is gone. Kansas? Gone. It was Magog. That's no longer my concern. You can't live forever in solitude. I'm Superman. I can do anything. Except, apparently, face your fear. I'm not afraid of him. I didn't mean him. I meant... Cal, you've lost so much since I first met you. Earthlings die, you know that. They were your parents, Clark. Cal. And she was your wife. Don't call them Earthlings. Hear me out. I have I... work to do, Diana. Here things grow. Oh, really? What? What's happening to the sky? It is a hologram. Well, then, this whole place is an illusion? But no, no, the animals are real, and the wheat field... Spectre, where are we? On the continent of Antarctica. Inside Superman's Fortress of Solitude. Fortress of... Well, there were always rumors that Superman had a hiding place, but, but this... This is unbelievable. Not any less believable than what you have seen. Far more believable than what you will see, Norman McKay. Attend. Stop it, Diana. You're spooking the animals. Computer, reactivate holographic image. 
least I provoked a reaction in something. Listen to me, damn it. I've come with news from the outside. Bad news. It's shaken the world. Cal, Magog's out of control. I tried to tell him that ten years ago. And the people of Metropolis didn't listen, I know. Stop punishing them. I'm not interested. <clears throat> Door open. You've locked yourself away in this lonely place for ten years. Look what it's done to you. Do you live in nothing but lies? I told you. Here are two words. See if they sound familiar. Truth and justice. You can't have completely forgotten them. Just see for yourself. See what he has let happen to the world. That's all I ask. <sighs> Monitor room door open. He, he's walking right over the edge of that pit. Watch out! He cannot hear you, Norman McKay. And he has no need of fear. Well, he's standing in midair. Oh, of course. I forgot. View screens on. The BBC has the whole battle captured on film. The fight began in the American city of St. Louis, where the metahuman known as Magog and his Justice Battalion descended upon the weathered creature known as the Parasite. The Parasite, once known as Maxwell Jensen, had the metahuman ability to absorb the powers of others. No one knows how the parasite attracted the attention of the Justice Battalion. But all witnesses agreed that before long, all of Magog's forces arrived on the scene. Captain Atom, who could loose the nuclear energy of his own body. Judo Master, who was lethal at using her opponent's weight and inertia to her own advantage. Thunderbolt, a superhuman athlete and martial artist. Peacemaker, the misnamed Weapons Smith. Nightshade, the otherworldly maniac who can summon a liquid darkness to the brightest of days. And Alloy, the giant biomechanical organism made of pure metal. And leading the battalion was Magog himself, his golden armor and horned helmet glowing in the sun. The battle crossed state lines and raged to the wheat fields of Kansas. Witnesses characterized the parasite as fearful and willing to surrender. Leave me alone. Please, leave me alone. Witnesses claim his pleas for mercy were ignored, and already people are speculating that the tragedy might have been averted had Magog relented. Onlookers were staggered, but not surprised by the savagery of the Justice Battalion's attack. Magog, one of the new breed of heroes, is best known as the one responsible for Superman's farewell to Metropolis. He can clearly be seen on camera ordering his team to ignore the Parasite's surrender. At this point, we will turn the commentary over to the on-site cameraman who captured the battle on film. These are the last words he ever spoke. The Parasite's taken a beating and he's panicked! God, why don't they leave him alone? Well, here comes Captain Adam. He's firing an energy blast. He touched the parasite. Captain Adam got too close to touch the parasite. He gained the Adam's powers. Oh, now he's firing back. Oh, oh my God. He split Captain Adam open. He split him open. At that point, the signal was cut off. Early reports indicate immediate casualties numbering close to a million as the dying atom's radioactive energy swept hundreds of kilometers, rendering the entire state of Kansas, as well as parts of Nebraska, Iowa, and Missouri, an irradiated wasteland. The total loss of America's breadbasket, the sterilization of its agrarian culture, has thrown the world economy into near collapse. Off. Do you see now? Do you see why we need you? Cal, please. Our generation takes its lead from you. We always have. You must face this. If you don't, neither will the rest of us. And it just goes on. Cal? Off. Do you see now? Do you see why we need you? 
Cal, please. Our generation takes its lead from you. We always have. You must face this. If you don't, neither will the rest of us. And it just goes on. Cal? Door open. There's nothing I can do from here. Go back to your island, Diana. You're safe there. Cal, please, you... She's gone, flown off. And now, what's happening to us? Are we flying too? No, but we are moving. Or rather, space and time move around us. She said, neither will the rest of us. Who did she mean? Those who, a decade previous, felt the crush of Superman's greatest and most necessary failing. His inability to perceive himself as the inspiration he is. The shock of seeing Superman suddenly abandon his never-ending battle took an immeasurable toll on his contemporaries, his peers. Some, their spirits stripped, chose Superman's path and retired. Others, unable to turn their backs completely on the world they know, continued to use their special abilities to champion order though in some most clandestine ways. I know this place. I've been here before. This is Keystone City. In the time of Superman's absence, Keystone City has become a utopia, a protectorate relentlessly patrolled by a gale force once human. No one sees him, no one hears him. He runs a lonely race, but all who live here have felt his presence. He is everywhere at once, a guardian angel who writes even the most harmless of wrongs with lightning speed. He lives between the ticks of a second. He is the Flash. Where are we now? The Pacific Northwest, where another of yesterday's guardians has claimed the forests as his area. Some call him a savior, others an environmental terrorist. He is feared unjustly by those who would deprive the beasts and birds of their sanctuary. His name is Hawkman. And now we're... we're in space! I won't be able to breathe! You have no need of breath, Norman McKay. You are now a creature of spirit. We are here to see the place where another former hero takes his refuge. I see a space station. Oh, it's enormous and glowing with a strange green light. He calls this place New Oa. High above the Earth's surface, his self-made emerald city twinkles in the night sky like a verdant star. There, Green Lantern commands a lonely throw, ever vigilant ever waiting for signs of threats extraterrestrial. The gods of yesteryear no longer walk among the humans, Norman McKay. They have left humanity to its own fate. But what of those who weren't gods? I remember another who made his home in Gotham City. What has become of the Batman? Ah, Batman. Please. You move! The next cat goes into you! <laughs> Come on, we got the queen, let's try it! Got a robot! Seems like a... Like a bat! Run! There's another one over there! And over there! We're surrounded! Don't worry, I got my nine! That didn't do nothing! Yeah, close it in! There's no place to run! Oh! 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 oh. Batman has his city under control. Where are we now? Oh, wait, this bridge. I recognize the tram that runs alongside it and this river. You've brought us to the Outerboro Bridge in Metropolis. I'm home. This startles you? It just seems so mundane. You've taken me to Antarctica and into space and... 
Now we're back here? I have taken you where destiny demands. Now we are done. But what? We are done. But, but that's all? That's what you have to show me? That disturbs you? Yes, you're an angel. That makes you a messenger of hope. At no time did I promise you hope. A greater power sent you. Your, your very existence is a testimony to faith. You mean that all you have to tell me is that those who could save us won't? Oh, Lord, what is it now? More metahumans. Another rumble right here on Otterboro Bridge. Look at them. They're animals. Hey, Mr. Terrific. I heard you was back in town. That's right, 666. And I got friends with him. I want you to meet my lady friend. Calls herself the Joker's dog. And my sizable second here is the battle robot, Annihilate. Targeting sequence activated. I can open that tin can up with my Swiss Army knife. Besides, I brought backup too. Right, Manitar? Very cool. You and your pals made a mistake standing on top of that tram, Mr. T. Those cables could snap in any minute. That is, with a little help from us. Open fire! Take him out! Lord, all those people in the tram are in the line of fire. The, the many humans are worse than before. They're not acting out of boredom, they're acting with abandon. Poor Kansas, they at least had some grasp of responsibility. Now they don't even have that. Nothing matters, they're following Magog's reckless lead. They're out of control. Almost got the cable! Got it! Don't you understand if any of us are to survive, any of us? Now more than ever, we need hope. And suddenly, there was a wind. No, not a wind, a blur of motion. Hey, someone just blew by me. Bending the steel of their weapons. <laughs> and changing the course of the mighty river below, swirling water up in a giant funnel to stop the fall of the tram car and set it gently on the bridge with all the passengers still inside. And even before the bystanders had freed themselves from the tram, they knew, we all did, he had come back. He had not abandoned us. He stood in the sky like a symbol of faith rewarded, the man of steel, the man of tomorrow, the last son of Krypton. For a brief moment, I am ecstatic. Look. But then it returns to me, the vision that haunted Wesley Dodds. Up in the sky. I see the vision, the man trapped behind a wall of flame, screaming in agony. It's a bird. It's him. It's a plane. It's Superman. Dear God, the threat of Armageddon hasn't ended. It's just begun. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar. And, and the seven angels prepared themselves to sound... Norman McKay. To sound... and uh, I... Uh, angels. No, I'm with the angel, aren't I? Norman McKay. Specter... Where are we now? It's so dark here and empty. I no longer have any sense of time or place. Time has little meaning where we walk, Norman McKay. We move freely from moment to moment, guided by your visions. 
I show you only that which you must see. You are disoriented? Enormously. A moment ago, we stood on the Outerboro Bridge just outside Metropolis. Then Superman came. He came back. And then... And then? And then I had a vision. It was terrible. I saw the apocalypse. Armageddon. And he was in the middle of it. I... I suppose I was dreaming. Were you? One vision leads us to the next. We move from this moment between moments to... New York City. Is, is that the Statue of Liberty? But look at all the people camped around its feet. The poor, the tired, the huddled masses of humanity. But who's that maniac in the blue armor and the golden eagle collar? Be silent, Norman McKay. And bear witness. This is my country. For years, the American Mando and his Minutemen have protected the U.S. from foreign threats, only to have overlooked the most insidious menace of all the filthy immigrants crowding at our shores, begging for citizenship. You foreigners dare expect sanctuary? America's not as big as it used to be. For God's sakes, Kansas is gone. We can't house you now. We can't feed you now. But still, you forced yourselves on us. Well, no more. Today, the American Mando declares war on the wretched refuse. Ready, boys? Then at the command of the Brain Trust, my minute men will cleanse America's shores. These aren't heroes, they're madmen. They're ready to battle over territory without bothering to care who gets hurt. They're killing people. Someone should do something. Indeed. America Mando. Is that... Is that Superman? They forget to lock the doors to the old folks' home? Lower your weapons. No, thanks. I got firepower I bet even you can't match. And me and my Minutemen got you outnumbered. That's where you're wrong. With Superman in the lead, seven figures drop out of the sky like angels. No, not angels, gods themselves. Over the thunder of panic, I hear names that have not been spoken in years. Hawkman, the Ray, Power Woman, Green Lantern, the Flash, Robin, Wonder Woman. Superman had returned, in doing so, drawing from seclusion the titans of yesteryear, their emerald flashes and scarlet strobes lighting the darkness of the day. Green Lantern, Power Woman, Flash, take care of the bystanders. We're on it. I'll just use my lantern power to create a giant shovel and scoop these citizens out of harm's way. I may not have GL's power, but super strength and the power of flight should help me give a few newcomers a lift. Up you go! Somebody help me! Don't mention it. You okay, Flash? Fine. I've already pulled 22 passengers from the capsule. Both carried them to my hand. Made one What did he say? He's fine. Yeah, well, you won't be fine, Suits. I got a disruptor here now. You were saying... My armor, my disruptor, you tore it in pieces. Nice work, Superman. Thanks, Diana. You want to use your x-ray vision to check on Robin? I can see him now. He's inside the Statue of Liberty's head, taking out the brain trust. No! The Minutemen are distracted! We're losing our mental link! Then concentrate. Command them to fire at anything that moves. Don't... You boys will never get ahead just lying around. Superman! Superman! A Superman! Superman! Excuse me, I'm a reporter. Let me through. Me too. Let me in there. Superman. Uh, Superman, we haven't seen you in years. Years? Hell, it's been a lifetime. Wait, where have you been all this time? Hey, wait. You can't leave. This is the story of the century. Where are they going? Quick. Radio Midtown. Let them know they're headed for the UN building. 
This is Chuck Kochman reporting live from the United Nations building. Minutes ago, we got word that Superman, that's right, Superman, has reappeared after a 10-year absence. Our bold copy helicopter reports that Superman and a team of metahumans is on its way to the UN, even as we speak. We can only speculate. Yes, oh, wait, here they are. Everybody shut up, will ya? When this guy talks, we listen. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, good afternoon. And many of you may remember us. We have been away for a while. That was our mistake. In our absence, a new breed of metahumans has arisen. A, a vast phalanx of self-styled heroes, unwilling to preserve life or defend the defenseless. A legion of vigilantes who have perverted their great powers, who have forsworn the responsibilities due them. We have returned to teach them the meaning of truth and justice. Together we will guide this new breed with wisdom, and if necessary, with force. Above all, we will restore order. We will make things right again. Will there be others? Our ranks will grow. Are you prepared to shut down those who don't honor your principles? I don't anticipate anyone acting without our sanction. Anyone, Superman? Would that include Magog? Superman, are you truly prepared to confront Magog in light of what has gone before? Magog will be dealt with if he surfaces. Given the consequences of his actions in Kansas, that seems unlikely. But what about Magog, the others? Where are you that there? is all. <laughs> I mean, Superman. Superman, Superman. wait, yeah. wait, Superman. 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 Where have you been all this time? Superman. Where will you call Superman. yourselves the Justice League? Ladies and gentlemen of the delegation, is anyone here delighted with what we've just heard? <coughs> no? <laughs> Why am I not surprised? General Secretary Wormwood. We have not assembled this meeting of the United Nations Security Council to discuss our feelings. We are here to discuss solutions. Very well, then. Let's open the floor to suggestions. We now have two topics. How do we deal with the meta-human population? And how do we deal with the Justice League? Now we're in some sort of meeting room of the United Nations Security Council. Their leader is General Secretary Wormwood. There is fear in this room. No, a validation of fear. These mortals are the leaders of their nations, but long have they suspected that they are no longer the captains of human destiny. Their suspicions have just been confirmed. You said you're here to judge a coming evil. Superman is somehow entwined in this sin, but what exactly is it? The answer to that question remains locked in your prophetic dreams, Norman McKay. What do you see? What do you hear? A, a, a jumble of images, a, a chorus of apocalyptic verses. It, it still makes so little sense. Superman said his league would grow. Who else will he call to his side? We shall see. A jumble of images, a, a chorus of apocalyptic verses. It, it still makes so little sense. Superman said his league would grow. Who else will he call to his side? We shall see. You want to follow him, but he seems to move at the speed of light. While we move at the speed of thought, though he can fly the distance between New York and Gotham City in seconds, we are simply there. Spectre, isn't anything simple? Everything you reveal to me is not right. Tell, Tell me what you see. An enormous mansion. A manor, really, surrounded by acres of land. But it looks as though it's nearly been destroyed. And no one's bothered to repair it. Indeed. Bruce? Who's he looking for? There's no one here. Everything's destroyed, except for that grandfather clock. Bruce! Bruce, come out! Alert. An authorized intruder approaching cave entrance. Engaging robotic units one and two to intercept. Cancel alarm. Let him come. I've been expecting him. 
All right, I'll play it your way. Spectre, he's moving the clock. I'll just have to come down to the cave. Bruce, I know you're down here. You can't hide from me. I bow to your superior wisdom. Units 25 and 32 resume patrol. After all, you know all about hiding. Don't you, Clark? Don't call me Clark. What happened to the manor? Once my identity got exposed, Bane and Two-Face happened to it. Doesn't matter. I have everything I need down here. Mm, so I see. Your computer skills were always impressive, but this is remarkable. All these monitors, it looks like they show just about every street corner in Gotham. Some of us make do without X-ray vision. And that metal frame you've attached to your body. My exoskeleton. Yeah, that's new, too. Some of us make do without a Kryptonian physique as well. Well, still, you've aged well, considering the years of punishment you put your body through. The gray hair looks good on you. Don't patronize me. This metal frame isn't as fashionable as the cape and the cowl, but then I don't have much need to dress up these days. It's not as if anyone intrudes on me. That hardly ever happens, Clark. That's right. Someone told me your knights became free once the supervillain genocide blew up Arkham Asylum and everyone in it. Not to mention Bellreef Prison and Blackgate. Not an action I'd condone, but tell me the thought of it doesn't give your invulnerable skin a little tingle. I don't have that dark a side. Tell that to your tailor. The background of your shield on your costume used to be a brighter color. Some things change. Black is a new look for you. It's for Kansas. You're in mourning? Very sentimental and boyish of you, Clark. Some things don't change. Bruce, the League needs you. I'm busy. Alert! Alert! Armed robbery in progress. Corner of 14th and Almond Dean. On screen. Computer, closest units. Robotic Bat Knight, Unit 46, on patrol in that sector. Maneuver 12. Initiate. Too busy to help save the world? The crisis at hand isn't new, Clark. Where have you been? Oh, I'm sorry. Perhaps I should ask Magog. Bruce, frictions have been building to a head for years, Clark. The metahuman population boomed while you were gone. Once ordinary folks decided you and I were too gentle and old-fashioned to face the challenges of the 21st century, they wanted their heroes stronger and more ruthless. Be careful what you wish for. Threat neutralized. Unit 46, resume patrol. Right now, the metahumans have the keys to Earth's kingdom. Resting control is a delicate matter. It requires finesse and meticulous, careful planning against those enemies more hidden. But it can be done. Without, I might add, Superman and the Justice League booming into town, punching now, asking questions later. Dick Grayson doesn't see it that way. You got him to reclaim the Robin mantle, although I hear he calls himself Red Robin these days. Is that supposed to sway me? Try harder. He and I never did see completely eye to eye. I have my own controls in place, thank you. They may be slower and more methodical than yours, but they get results. You used to brag that Metropolis was a utopia next to Gotham. Now, who has a utopia? Some paradise. From what I can see, Gotham is nearly a police state. You always favored scaring people into obeying the law, but, but this you're willing to turn ordinary citizens into a superstitious, cowardly lot? They'll fear me more than they'll trust you. I don't trust you. After all, you left, I stayed. We're not limited to Gotham, Clark. We've built a network that extends from here all the way through Star City. We? I have allies. Human allies a little more in tune than your friends to humanity's needs. We don't want to rule the world. We just want to straighten it out. Our way. By ourselves. Then you're sure you won't join me? For a man who can hear clouds scrape together, you don't listen very well. The only thing I wonder about your down and dirty, quick and fast totalitarian solutions is whether I'd be the first to be reformed by your new regime. Goodbye, Clark. What? 
What's happening now? Time falls forward for us, Norman McCain. We straddle the boundary of the days as easily as a man stepping over a crack in the sidewalk. During this time, Superman continues to gather meta humans to his side. Today on Megatrends, the Justice League. A spokesman for the Rejuvenated Justice League announced today that three more well-known metahumans have pledged themselves to Superman's cause. The Golden Guardian, Our Man, and the Red Tornado are among the dozens of metahumans, old and young, to join the Man of Steel in the last few weeks. Is the Justice League a three-alarm fire or just a flash in the pan? Find out in today's episode of Megatrends. Whenever possible, Superman negotiates peace. Whenever impossible, he enforces it. Back off, Superman. My fire's hot enough to melt steel. This is your last chance, Phoebus. We know every one of your metahuman gang. You, Starman, and the others will join the Justice League willingly, or we'll take you down. Eat heat, old man. You had your chance. Flash, Hawkman, take out the others. Phoebus is mine. I'll take Starman out of the light. Starman, watch it. I think the Flash is... Where is he? Where? But even in battle, Superman transforms enemies into allies. Our sources indicate that the most recent many humans to join Superman's roster include Starman and the flamethrower known as Phoebus. Superman's doing it. He, he's succeeding. The Justice League is like an unstoppable force. They're joining and falling in line. Most of them. Oh, the whole building's collapsing. What's happening? I'm at a human. They're tearing the place apart. Come on, Wiz. Let's get it on. I don't know what your story is, pal, but you just got yourself in a world of trouble. Of course, I'd say you had trouble before looking at that costume. Never seen a man dressed up like a church. Name's Cathedral, Wiz. I'm the guy that's gonna ring your bell. There are people trapped in there. Why doesn't somebody do something? Hey, someone shut up on the top of the sky. Superman and Wonder, Wonder Woman. Cathedral, that's enough. Cathedral, if you want to fight, come to me. You'll have to wait your turn, babe. First, I gotta waste the Wiz. Get off him, now. Diana. <laughs> Diana, take a breath. They're not evil, they're just misguided. How badly? If they want to act like warriors, I'll show them war. You're right. They seem to have learned little regard for human life. And there's nothing more sacred than that. Time shifts too fast for me. My spirit guide takes me from the battlefield to someone's boardroom. High in a sunlit office overlooking Metropolis. I said two sugars. <laughs> You ham. Savage, I just had that secretary trained. Not very well. But now I think you'll find that she's not as stiff-necked as she used to be. Anyway, sorry. Immortal habits die hard. By the way, hello, Luthor. Ah, I see you brought King with you. Good afternoon, Luthor. Come in, both of you. I'm sure you'd like to meet the others. Spectre, where are we? Where the sun shines, but spreads no light. The dead. I said two sugars. You ham. Savage! I just had that secretary trained. Not very well. But now I think you'll find that she's not as stiff-necked as she used to be. Anyway, sorry. Immortal habits die hard. By the way, hello, Luthor. Ah, I see you brought King with you. Good afternoon, Luthor. Come in, both of you. I'm sure you'd like to meet the others. Spectre, where are we? Where the sun shines, but spreads no light, attend. Savage, there's your chair. And King, have a seat at the end of the table. Let me make introductions. 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our latest members are Mr. Vandal Savage. Rather an old hand at this sort of work. 50,000 years old, Luthor. Precisely. An immortal who has traveled the Earth since his Cro-Magnon days, I believe. I rose from humble beginnings, it is true. And this is King, a former member of the Royal Flush Gang, now our newest member. <laughs> if he plays his cards right. Hmm, well put, Luthor. We call ourselves the Mankind Liberation Front. To your left is Ibn al-Jufash, our rather dashing heir to the empire of the late Race al Ghul. Good day. And to your right is Lord Naga. Who is Cobra? One is honored to meet you both. Across the table is Selina Kyle. Who is Catwoman? How do you do? And beside her is her companion, Edward Nigma. Who is the Riddler? Who should be reminded that he is here solely as a grace to Ms. Kyle. Simmer down, Eddie. To business, gentlemen. I need a status report. Jufash, where do we stand with medical attention and disaster relief for victims of the Kansas disaster? Delayed. According to my monitoring operations, they are backed up for weeks. Splendid. Tech dispersal, Lord Naga. We have integrated another six score vigilantes. Given the Arkham and Bell Reeve survivors we re-outfitted and renamed, we are now responsible for 8% of the superhero population. Excellent. Selina, what's the outlook on... Oh, pardon me for questioning, but you're impeding public service? You're arming metahumans? Wouldn't that serve to make the world a worse place to be? Where does the Mankind Liberation part come in? Did I miss something? Selina, for your own good, keep your guest in line. Remember, dear, curiosity killed the cat. Actually, Luthor, I had a similar concern. Yes, King? May I assume that the MLF works, then, to raise the stakes rather than lower them? In a manner of speaking, no pain, no gain. Our objective is to heighten the tension between humans and metahumans, to bring it to a head, so that humans have no choice but to reclaim the reins of world power, regardless of the cost. There will be war, there will be bloodshed, but in the end, mankind will once again rule the Earth. Mankind? And that would translate as you guys. Wow! When is a villain not a villain? When he labors for a greater good, Nigma. Excuse me. Grace, uh, will you send in my valet? I'm ready for my shave. Um, m m Mr. Luther, this is Shirley, one of the typists. G Grace is, uh, I mean, she's been... Oh, I, I forgot. Well, have someone send my young man here. R right, right away, Mr. Luther. Which brings me to our new problem. The resurfaced Justice League, and how their untimely arrival has turned our ten-year agenda into a ten-day stratagem. I never dreamed they'd return. Not in a million years. Nevertheless, Savage, the gods have stepped down from Olympus, and frankly, I see several ways to turn their arrival to our advantage. Ready for your shave, Mr. Luther. Mmm, now there's a handsome young man. Almost as good-looking as you, Juvash. I've got the menthol warmed just the way you like it, Mr. Luther. Very good, my boy. You may proceed. Now, as I was saying, I see several ways of turning this to our advantage. In fact, by entering into a certain alliance. Uh, Jufash, have you made that contact we discussed? Messages have been exchanged. <laughs> Keep me posted. With this alliance... I can guarantee a chance to hasten the current crisis to its end by exacerbating it. And in the meantime, we have nothing to fear from the League. Oh, no, no, no. Not even from Superman. He will not touch me. He will not. He, he, he cannot. In fact, I've got the most marvelous anti-Superman plan. Isn't that right, boy? Absolutely, Mr. Luther. 
Who is that young man? He seems so out of place here. He is the captain of the lightning and the thunder. Come, we have spent too much time wallowing in sin. There are other players who demand our attention. My heaven! Heaven has little to do with where we stand, Norman McKay. You're right. This place is like a Roman orgy thrown into Daddy's Inferno. It's a madhouse. All these metahumans, they're, they're like uncontrollable children. Many of them are children. The children of gods. You are in their place, Norman McKay. Half of them are drunk, and the other half are worse than drunk. Over there, in front of that stage. Are they fighting or dancing? To them, it is the same. These kids, they're monsters, beasts. They will be tamed. Who's back? How do you find our club? I think it's super, 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 super. A superman. <laughs> Let me be the first to welcome you to the rec room. The only nightclub that's metahumans only. How, how about a drink on the house? Alcohol. This doesn't help. Look out! You do the heat, Party's over. Oh, I'm shaking. Ain't it past your bedtime, Grandpa? What does the S stand for? Senile, huh? <laughs> Whatever you're selling, I ain't... Oh. Shut up. Thank you. I'm here because the world's in bad shape. We have a lot to do, and not a lot of time to do it in. I want you to join the League. Willingly. You join the League? Yeah. Sign up with soups. Before you do, you should know that we have rules. Heroes act in a certain way. This isn't it. Those of you who take up with us, willingly, will be expected to be as responsible as you are powerful. You'll be expected to behave better. Those who don't, will be dealt with. Our job is thankless, but we do what has to be done. Right now, we're humanity's only hope. Be heroes. Holy God! He was here! Did you see Can him? He looked good! Can't so believe he looked that So, Via, are, are you in? Yeah. Are you kidding, Nightstar? I feel like I was just asked to become the 13th disciple. What do you think? I thought my dad was full of crap for putting on the old Red Robin costume and being drafted by that guy. But now, God, I'd follow that man to Apocalypse. He's right, you know. The League knows the way. What the? Somebody shot something at us. It's an arrow. A green arrow. So you heard Big Blue's pitch. Now for the democratic response. Time shifts, armies build, and the voice of Wesley Dodds murmurs gently to me. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. A quote from Revelations. Another one. Revelations. Armageddon. That's what we're trying to avoid. And that's exactly why I've convened this first official meeting of the Justice League. Now, first of all, I'd like to thank Green Lantern for his hospitality. The orbiting space station he maintains through his lantern power makes a perfect headquarters. What do you call it, GL? New Oa. New Oa will make a perfect base of operations. Now, on to business. As predicted, our ranks are growing. The Justice League now includes 47 members. With these additional... Superman's troops soon wield power enough to shake the Earth. But will they have enough power to save it? And if so, from the... Time shifts, armies build, and the voice of Wesley Dodds murmurs gently to me. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. A quote from Revelations. Another one. Revelations. Armageddon. That's what we're trying to avoid. And that's exactly why I've convened this first official meeting of the Justice League. Now, first of all, I'd like to thank Green Lantern for his hospitality. The orbiting space station he maintains through his lantern power makes a perfect headquarters. What do you call it, GL? New Oa. New Oa will make a perfect base of operations. Now, on to business. As predicted, our ranks are growing. 
The Justice League now includes 47 members. With these additions... Superman's troops soon wield power enough to shake the Earth. But will they have enough power to save it? And if so, from what? I have been so long in the company of the Spectre. I have seen so much in my strange role as a spirit that I have nearly forgotten my actual mission. The details are of such multitude and such magnitude that to remember the larger picture is often a struggle. America heals, but America is not the world. Stronger in number, the Justice League begins to confront anarchy on a global scale. I see the young fight alongside the old. Green Lantern joins the young metahuman named Avia in a battle over the streets of a Russian town called Krivotser. Superman and Red Robin lead a team of younger heroes into downtown Tokyo, where the last son of Krypton confronts one of the giant robots that dominate the Japanese landscape. That robot looks awfully big, Superman. Leave it to me. You take out Tokyo Rose and the rest of the gang. Most metahumans fall into line at the mere sight of the man from Krypton. Many do not. Clearly, each rebellion further frustrates Superman. Social government was never his arena. Is it possible that the constant pressures thrust upon an emerging world leader could bend even a man of steel to the breaking point? Power Woman, any word on how Superman's doing in Japan? He's just wrapping up a battle in Tokyo and moving on to Eastern Europe. You look bothered. Something wrong? Not with the fighting. I was just thinking, Green Lantern, we've accounted for nearly every metahuman in the United States except one. Right. Magog, the man who drove Superman from Metropolis. In all these missions, how is it that we have yet to find him? With his super senses, Superman should be able to find anyone. If he's looking. Hold on. Superman and Wonder Woman have entered Macedonia. I wish I were with them. Well, I'd love to get a crack at their next target. There's a metahuman there who left his homeland in Germany to set himself up as an honest-to-goodness dictator in Macedonia. They say he's strong enough to give even Superman a run for his money. Really? Who is he? I am Von Bach. Learn to fear my name. The only thing I fear, Von Bach, is that you're in for a big surprise. Give it up, Von Bach. We've already taken down your metahuman army. Ah. Sailor Salt. Von Bach is a man of steel. Sorry, the name's taken. He's out. Finally. It's not supposed to be this way. What? We shouldn't have to fight this hard. You said it yourself, Cal. We do what we have to do. And yet we're ending up with more captives than converts. What do we do with those who refuse to see the light? I have a suggestion. Follow me. Where are we going? <laughs> Welcome to Atlantis, Wonder Woman. And Superman. It is long since either of you have visited the kingdom beneath the sea. You have quite the kingdom here, Aquaman. That name no longer applies. Call me by my birth name. Arthur will do. Arthur. The architecture is worthy of Paradise Island. Every bit as beautiful as any place above the sea. More. The tides of time have been kind to you, Princess. You have not aged a day since last we met. And Superman, though I see flecks of white foam in your hair, your power is just as great. Unlike Wonder Woman, you don't even need a mask to breathe beneath the water. I have no need of oxygen, Arthur. Your powers truly improve with age. Would that the outside world had fared so well, Arthur. But times above have grown hard and harsh. The seas provide the perfect buffer between your world and ours. Bearing that in mind, we have come to ask permission to create here an underwater penal colony for rebellious metahumans. What? Don't insult me by acting disingenuous, Superman. It's not as if we're unused to being burdened with the surface world's refuse. Permission denied. Arthur, if you could only see the trouble we're in up there. Join us. Stand at our side as you did in your youth. A faint invitation. Though I miss the camaraderie, you know I was never comfortable being your Aquaman. 
I have long since ceded my name and role to my protege. I understand many of our old friends have followed suit. My subjects need me, Princess. You have hundreds of champions to defend a few land masses. I protect the other 70% of the world, and there is only one of me. I have responsibilities you cannot even dream of. You, Princess, surely understand how uneasy lies the head that wears a crown. I no longer have my royal station, Arthur. No. Yes. Recently, my Amazon sisters decreed that I had failed in my mission as an ambassador. That I had not made the world a better place. They stripped me of my royalty and my heritage. I am no longer welcome on Paradise Island. I... am sorry, but that has no bearing on my decision. Then resume your solitude, Arthur. Relish your world, for so long as it lasts. From up here, the Earth looks so peaceful. Diana. Go ahead and ask, Cal. You've wanted to since we returned to Green Lantern Satellite. How long were you planning on keeping that from me? Which? The prison? Or my loss? Both. Diana, you have changed. And I don't like what you're asking me to do. I'm not used to forcing others to follow my lead. Now I'm supposed to jail those who won't to act as judge and jury against our own kind? That's a fascistic line, Diana. Then get ready to cross it. We are at war, Cal, and we will take prisoners. We have to. They're not our kind. We're protectors of humanity. They are barely human. Is this you talking, Diana? I sense so much anger in you. Not anger, Cal. Passion. Diana. <clears throat> what? What? Excuse me, but we thought you'd want to know. Know what? It's Magog. We found him. Where? Kansas. Gently. Gently. It's only a house. I can pick up a house without destroying... No, no, no! Damn. What are you doing back in Kansas, Magog? Well, well. Look who it is. The Metropolis Milk Toast. And you've brought the rest of your senior citizen squad with you. <laughs> I never left, Blue Boy. What do you think you're doing? Just working hard so I can have a little place to call my own. Rose garden, white picket fence, radiation-soaked front yard. That's the American way, isn't it? Instead, you blasted it with the energy beams you shoot from that power rod of yours. Yeah, well, I didn't like the floor plan. If you can't make it work, then destroy it, eh, Magog? Besides, my Geiger counter says there's not quite enough radiation in this area. I'm looking for a real hot spot. Radiation might kill them, but it doesn't hurt me. Of course, not much can. Superman, you don't have to... Quiet, Green Lantern. This is Superman's fight. I saw the news footage of your last mission, and believe me, it will be your last. I never thought you'd go this far over the top. You led six unstable powerhouses against one pathetic parasite. An overkill gesture that murdered one million people. And what are you gonna do about it? Go ahead. Take a swing. Punish me. Try to lock me away, if you got the guts. I'm not afraid of you, Magog. Oh, get out of town. No, no, wait. You already did that. Actually, you got a lot of nerve blaming me. This was your fault. My fault. I'm not afraid of you, Magog. Oh, get out of town. No, no, wait. You already did that. Actually, you got a lot of nerve blaming me. This was your fault. My fault? Think back. You're the one who let himself get strung up by the man on the street ten years ago. Box Populi, man. Out with the old, in with the new, brighter, meaner. 
a next year's model. That's what the hungry crowd always wants. Hell, they were calling you old-fashioned when I was a teenager. World's oldest Boy Scout. But you wouldn't change. You wouldn't flex with the times. Ten years ago, the Daily Planet even asked if that's why the Joker got so many notches in his belt when he blew into our town. Remember? I remember. How many did he kill the last time? When he broke into the Daily Planet building itself. How many? Ninety-two men? And one woman. Her name was Lois. Hell, we both tore up the city looking for that bastard. I really thought you or Batman would get to him first. Even I almost missed him. Almost. <laughs> Joker! <laughs> no more prisons, Joker. The last laughs on that. I will never forget the look on your face when you saw me standing over that smoking creep. Arrest him. Arrest Magog for murder. All the way to the jail, I thought. What a sap. What an old woman. Blue Boy's dragging me in for having the stones he doesn't. Times are tough. Joker had been deserving worse than cuffs for years. So I took it upon myself to lay him down. I can't be judged for that. People agreed with me. I became a hero. But you just wouldn't roll with the punches. You had to get in the last shot and piss me off. I wanted the torch passed. I wanted to cement my claim as Metropolis's new number one boy. I asked for a title bout between you and me, and I won by default when you flew off with your cape between your legs. I never got a piece of you, but now you're right here, right where I want you. You know, Soups, the way you took off, I always thought you were afraid of me. A lot of people did, but that wasn't it. You were afraid that I was the man of tomorrow. You were afraid of the future I represented. Well, look around you. This is what I represent. You must be proud. Proud? Proud? God damn you! Superman, look out! <laughs> Proud of being the man of tomorrow. Your fault, you bastard. The world changed, but you wouldn't. So they chose me. They chose the man who would kill over the man who wouldn't. And now they're dead. A million ghosts. Punish me. Lock me away. Kill me! Just make the ghost go away! <laughs> Cal, that blast was so powerful. Are you... I'm fine, Diana. But I do fear for the future. You were right. We are at war. Wait, Spectre, wait. You're taking me away from the scene too soon. I follow your lead, Norman McKay. But I need to see Superman's reaction. What did he mean by, we are at war? Time folds, and a new structure rises from the ashen fields of Kansas. It is an invention of necessity. It, it looks like a prison. A stronghold of justice. He's doing it. Superman's doing it. He's building the gulag Wonder Woman asked for. But it, it seems unwise to contain so much power and fury under one roof, and yet, what choice does Superman have? It is a question he will ask himself a hundred times in the days to come. Meanwhile, an ungodly fellowship has begun to manifest, one that may change all that we know thus far. We're back in... The boardroom of LexCorp, gentlemen, and dear Selina. A pleasure to have you all here again. You seem especially chipper this morning, Lex. And well, I should be. Although the true kudos go to our colleague Jufash here. He has some most interesting connections. The details are unimportant. The result is what matters, Luther. Quite right. Quite right. Well, let us all congratulate Jufash for negotiating the one union that may yet make the world safe for mankind. Friends, I present to you our newest ally in the war against the gods. The Batman. Oh. Hello, Luther. I never thought I'd see you in my office. What do you think of the place? 
I've been in your office several times over the years, Luther. You just haven't seen me. Indeed, well, I... They've begun to build a gulag. You know this. I know that I don't want to spend my remaining days there. I can hardly believe you're here. If I'd known that a common enemy would bring us together, I would have invented one years ago. This must be killing you. Given the circumstances, what choice do I have but to throw in with Lex Luthor? Alone, neither you nor I can expect victory. But together, we can bring down the Justice League once and for all. And he cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth. And when he cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Another vision, Normal Decay? Yes, they're coming more and more quickly. Dreams of Armageddon. Certainly you must share them with me, Spectre. How else do you explain the road we walk? How else do you unerringly lead us to the tableaus and realities behind my dreams? I see many things, Norman McKay, but the future is not one of them. I do not lead you. You lead me, inexorably, to an imminent hour when judgment must be passed and justice served. Only you foresee the road to the apocalypse. With that pronouncement, we begin once more to wander the earth like spirits. Time ebbs and flows around us. Many of the places I see are new and strange. Others are all too familiar. The Gulag. We're back before the prison that Superman has built to hold the metahumans. But it's finished. Once the Kansas wastelands were stripped of radiation, Superman's penitentiary was fast completed. The Gulag was built to imprison the deadliest and most uncontrollable of the superhumans. Thanks to its vast size, it was intended to house prisoners for months to come. Within two weeks of its completion, it filled beyond capacity. Still, the walls hold, thanks in no small part to the Gulag's architect and its warden. The architect was once the greatest escape artist of three worlds, an unparalleled master of bombs and traps. His name is Scott Free. Although Earth knows him as Mr. Miracle. Who's that with him? Uh, the one dressed like an astronaut. He looks vaguely familiar. That is Adam Blake, the warden of this place. The world knows him as Captain Comet, one of the oldest and perhaps most brilliant of Earth's superhumans. Hello, Scott. How are our guests? I think the natives are getting restless. We've got a few troublemakers gathering in the central square. I was just going to run a scan. Computer, scan the central courtyard for inmates. Analyze most likely threats. Scanning. Primary threat, Von Bach, self-style dictator of Macedonia. Superpower, nearly invulnerable. Immense strength, enhanced speed. I knew that villain would be trouble. Secondary threat, 666. Former resident of Metropolis. Superpowers. Ability to manifest impenetrable force field around body. Cyborg arm. Tertiary threat. Tokyo Rose. Hyper expertise in all forms of martial arts. Oh, and the list goes on. Under his command, guards stand ever watchful over the belligerent. Computer, continue tracking 666. I don't trust that madman. And the repentant. And show me Magog's room. I want to make sure the other inmates aren't harassing him. All these metahumans are gathered here for what purpose? So they can brood? No. So they can learn. Activate holo program. It's really very simple. Oh, no! Not that damn recording again! You said it, 666. I can't listen to that damn hologram again. I'd blow my own head off if they hadn't taken my guns. In this world, there is right and there is wrong. Oh, yeah? And that distinction is not hard to make. 
So where does robbing us of our freedom fall, oh great and powerful Oz? Please understand our intent. None of you are here for punishment. You're here for education. We're here because of forced busing, you stupid recording! How many different ways can you spew that Pollyanna crap? The powers we have, the things we do, they're meant to inspire ordinary citizens, not intimidate them, not terrify them. Day after day, he talks to us like we're the bad guys. Who bad Eclipse though, huh? Who toasted Ray Al Ghul? Guys like us, that's who. We save lives, man. We cannot act as judge and jury. We adhere to a moral code based on the preservation of life. Easy for him to say. Did he ever have to fight the Slaughter Brigade? Man of tomorrow, my ass. Try man of the 1950s. Times change, but he still expects everyone to live up to some cobweb code. He sticks us in here just because we don't kiss babies and salute the friggin' flag. I'm sick of this medieval thinking. His code's just as empty as the stupid hologram. Sorry you feel that way, 666. Oh, that must be why you opened fire in the middle of a human crowd. Why well, you thought it was acceptable to endanger an entire cable car full of unarmed citizens. Hey, I was just... Leave alone, Savoy. Uh-oh. Von Bach's getting mad. Trying to build an empire here, too, Von Bach? I am to your rule and regulation not subject. The world is mine. You will be mine. Listen up, all of you. It shouldn't surprise you that Von Bach is here. We brought him in for killing opponents who had already surrendered. Schweiner! Ah! Ouch! I didn't even see Comet move. Telekinesis, man. Mind power. Slam Von Bach right into a wall. Hey, Von Bach! You all right, man? Take your hands from me. I am Von Bach. You have a lot to learn, Von Bach. Get to it. Excellent. You're spying on what's going on inside the gulag, Mr. Luther? Spying is such a denigrating word, my boy. I am merely gathering information. After all, I went to great expense to create and supply 8% of the meta-human population. I want to get my money's worth. And keeping tabs on activities in Superman's cell... Seems like just the way to do it. If you say so, Mr. Luther. Spectre, that young man standing with Luthor. Billy Batson. Earlier, you called him the captain of the thunder and the lightning. Is he Captain Marvel? Yes, Norman McKay. His role in this war remains a mystery. Even to the old wizard who first called down the thunder for him. Good Lord. Sp Spectre... Where have you taken me now? My, my sense is real at the side of this place. This is neither a place nor a time, Norman McKay. No place is from here. No time is outside here, soon or late. Those enormous figures, they're, they're titans, as large as planets. Even now, the old wizard summons the galactic lords and immortals who are the quintessence of all power cosmic. Please, I need your help. Shazam, we hear your call. Old wizard, I for one shall answer. I, high father of the new gods, will speak with you. And I, Ganthet, last of the guardians of the universe. The phantom stranger will listen. As will I, Zeus the immortal. Is that... is that the real Zeus? Be silent, Norman McKay. Attend. Please. I've nurtured Billy Batson for years. I have blessed him with the power of Shazam. I could love him no more were he my son. And he is lost. We must help him. We must help them all. 
No more Shazam. Over the millennia, we have often lent our guidance and wisdom to the Earthlings, only to watch them march proudly towards disaster. Ganthet is not wrong. The humans are not our responsibility. They are but motes in the cosmos, an insignificant factor in the grand life equation. How, How interesting, interesting that, that you insist, insist upon this. this. Spectre. You're joining their conversation. That you are all so concerned with how unconcerned you should act. Tell me, do you then dwell on the Earth's problems because you are so cosmically bored? Or is it just possibly that you congregate in order to prevent each other from interfering? This, this is too much. Their voices, it's like listening to thunder. Hey, they're something, ain't they? <laughs> Good Lord, you, you're nothing but a skeleton. And... And you can see me? Even though I got no eyes, they're pretty wild, man. Thanks, Boston Brain. I'm a goat. This, this is too much. Their voices, it's like listening to thunder. Hey, they're something, ain't they? <laughs> Good Lord, you, you're nothing but a skeleton. And, and you can see me? Even though I got no eyes, they're pretty wild, huh? Name's Boston Brand. I'm a ghost. Nice to meet you. So, this place, this void, it's your realm? Mine? Nah. I just enjoy bopping around ethereal planes from time to time. Always like to travel. Used to be with the circus. I was a daredevil trapeze jockey. Now I'm the agent of a higher power. Can you imagine? Wait, who am I talking to? Of course you can. <laughs> no offense, Padre. Pastor, and no, frankly, I can't imagine any of this. Since seminary, I've been more philosopher than priest. In my church, I preach that God is not a person, but rather a force with many names. Works for me. One that motivates us to master our own faith. I never believed in the old world notion of assigning a physical face to that force or its agents. Oh, you're on the right track, Padre. But now, seeing this, tell me, is the specter truly an angel? Oh, absolutely. An angel of death. What? Don't get me wrong. He used to be a normal Joe, a cop, as I recall, named uh, Jim Corrigan. But from the moment he got tapped by the big G to be an avenging spirit, he started to lose touch with his human side. Long time ago, he was a superhero himself. Since then, he's gotten weirder. And now, well, to tell you the truth, you can't be sure whose side he'll take in any of this. Capiche? Norman McKay. And speak of the angel, good talking with you, Padre. Don't be in any hurry, but when you get to the other side someday, look me up. So long. Bye. Uh, Spectre, that man, that, that ghost, he said you were... Come, Norman McKay. We must leave. Where are we going now? Into a nightmare. <laughs> No, no. It's terrible. Superhuman slaughtering the innocent, ravaging the cities. No, no. And projection. Those things on the video screen, they, they never happened, Mr. Luther. But they could have. And really, that's the point, isn't it? Superhumans can do anything they please. They can maim, they can kill, they can make the world a very ugly place. Fortunately, you don't have to take part in their world, do you? No. No! That's right. You'll stay right where I order you to stay. Our old friend Sivana saw to that, didn't he? Oh, what's this? Looks like Sivana's little worm friend has done its job and is crawling back out of your ear, my boy. Let me get that. 
ingenious little bugger Serrano was. Do you suppose that when they coined the term mad scientist, they were thinking of him? I'll bet they were. Excuse me, I believe I need another worm. There we are. Oh, well, rest in peace, Ivana. Science marches on. I'll just put this little worm on your ear and let it crawl its way in. <laughs> the worms crawl in. Oh, the worms crawl out. Sh 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 oh, no, no. There'll be no retreat. Not yet. I still have a very special job for you. Now, you just sit there and let that little mind worm do its work. I have a meeting with our new ally, the Batman. I must say, he's not nearly as clever as I had expected. Perhaps eight is finally retarding his brain. Hmm. I'd say that little microtransmitter I planted in Luther's private laboratory is worth the fortune it took to build. Ah, oh, Batman! There you are! I was just talking about you. Luther? Were you? I was just in your factory, watching the production line. Ah, oh, yes! The army of robotic Bat Knights that we're building together. What? What do you think? I think you authorized triple shifts without telling me. Strength is in numbers. It took you a long time, but you finally learned that. But those Bat Knights, magnificent, aren't they? Between your design and my production, the Justice League doesn't stand a prayer of survival. Soon, we will be able to cross them with an unyielding legion of steel soldiers. I can feel your pulse throb from here, Luther. Don't double-cross me. Our objective is world order, not world domination. Don't forget your agenda. Oh, I wouldn't dream of it. Now come, I believe we both have a meeting to decide what we should do next. So what did you do next? So then I flew him up to, oh, about here, and I said, Do you see that beautiful blue marble brainiac? That's my world. Return it now. Did he hear you? Actually, not in airless space, no. But, but believe me, he got the message. NORAD was back online within five minutes. So did you destroy him? Just short of. Buried some of his circuitry on Saturn, some on Argo, and the rest inside a Pulitzer in Clark Kent's apartment. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You never told me that story before. Gods, those were better days. Uh, easier, anyway. Seems like there was more time to do things like this. Speak for yourself. This is the first time I've ever flown a hundred miles out into space and sat on the edge of a satellite to watch the sun rise over the Earth. Really? I thought everyone with flight power would have tried it by now. A lot of us can fly, Cal. Some of us are even impervious to the cold of space. But all of us need to breathe air, except you. <laughs> right, I forgot. And even I need a radio mic to be heard out here. It is beautiful, though. I love the way the sunlight shines on all these small floating asteroids. It reminds me of water sparkling in the Aegean Sea. <laughs> I remember the first time I saw that shining water. I tried to snatch the sunlight right off the waves. Well, you can grab these space rocks. In fact, I'll bet I can take this small one and skip it off all four of those large ones. Watch. Nice shot. Let me try. Well done. Diana, what's this about being ousted by your own people? W when did this happen? Shortly after you went into seclusion. For years, I had been the Amazon's ambassador to the outside world. My mission was to spread a message of peace and order. As the world continued to darken, there was some doubt as to how well I had done my job. Nice shot. Thanks. My Amazon sisters, my own mother, came to suggest that I had perhaps failed. They actually put me on trial. I pled my case, but in the end they decreed that I had indeed not changed man's world, that it had changed me. They stripped me of my royalty and my heritage. 
I'm sorry. Don't be. When I look at you, Cal, you have more nobility than I did. Even more than my mother has. I'm not like a king. I certainly don't try to be. You don't have to do anything on purpose, Cal. You were born to it. I remember when you first appeared and there were articles about you everywhere. Somebody wrote that if Krypton never blew up, you might have grown up to be a plumber or a school teacher. <laughs> I wrote that. I mean, Clark Kent did. The first time I interviewed myself. What's wrong with plumbers and school teachers? Nothing. But they're metaphors for ordinary people. And I don't think even you believe that you would ever have grown up to be ordinary. Not on Earth or on Krypton or anywhere else. Because what I fail to do, you do without even trying. What's that? Get people to change their behavior for the better, just by being better than they are. Hmm. Mind if I borrow your golden lasso? Cal, I'm talking about something important. I know, I know. I'm just not comfortable discussing it. Your lasso? Here. I'm surprised you want to touch it. It's magic, and I know how much it bothers you. I never had any use for magic. Even so, it serves its purpose. I doubt even you could break this rope. Maybe, maybe not. I do know that you can forget magic and just use a few mathematical principles and good hand-eye coordination any day to do this. You roped three of those small asteroids together. And a little heat vision to seal the deal. There. Out of many, one. A good lesson for us. Is it? Sometimes I think that's about true. There. Out of many, one. A good lesson for us. Is it? Sometimes I think that was my problem. What do you mean? The Amazons believe in peace through strength. Too often I relied on an olive branch and not a cestus. I always admired your gentility. It didn't get the job done. But you did your best. Then why isn't the world better? Well, there are degrees of... How many degrees were you interested in hearing about when you retired? You said it yourself, Cal. We are warriors. We have an obligation to wage combat. Given who we are, Diana, given the powers we possess, we have a greater obligation to keep the peace. Only the weak succumb to brutality. Order! Order! Spectre, where are we now? Back among the rebellious angels, Norman McKay. We have returned to the lair of Lex Luthor. I became lost in thought there for a moment. It was so peaceful to see Superman and Wonder Woman. For a moment, they seemed almost like school children. But their lesson has yet to be learned. Attend. Ladies and gentlemen, once Superman and his toadies are out of the way, the Mankind Liberation Front can seize power. And with Batman's little Bat Knights keeping the peace, we can return the reins of civilization to the humans. Sounds like a plan. But again, so does this. Can't we just drop a K-bomb on Big Blue's pit curl? Sadly, Mr. Queen, Kryptonite no longer packs the punch it did in the good old days. As I learned the hard way, <laughs> chalk it up to solar radiation Superman cells have been guzzling all these years. He's at the height of his invulnerability. Now, once the war begins, Batman, can your players advance to the front lines if necessary? We'll be in place, Luther. Obviously, we haven't the raw might to match Superman's army, but we have the fire of youth on our side. Indeed. But I don't recognize many of the faces in the group you've brought with you. Can you introduce them? I'm unfamiliar with their credentials. Certainly. This young lady is Nightstar, the daughter of Red Robin and Starfire. And beside her is Jade, the daughter of Green Lantern, along with her brother, the shadowy Obsidian. The woman with the bow is Red Hood, the daughter of the archer known as Speedy. The half-panther, half-man there is called Wildcat. And this young woman is Park West, the daughter of the Flash. The man in the top hat is Zatara, the magician. And over there, in the black armor carrying the crossbow, is Olivia Queen, the third Black Canary. My daughter, I might add. Thank you, Oliver. And behind him is... Yes, 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 I see. Point taken. They all come from good breeding and are quite powerful, no doubt. Exactly. 
The sons and daughters of many of the Justice Leaguers have come to lend their support. Pardon me. Yes, Jufash. Are these younger metahumans prepared to fight tooth and nail with the generation that sired them? Aren't all young people son? Well, I, um, perhaps we should begin to, uh... They're prepared to strike when I give the signal. Very well, then. Meeting adjourned. Luther, wait a moment. I assume your tactical strategy somehow involves the Gulag. Why? Why, yes. Details? Hmm. Soon enough. In fact, I'm awaiting word myself. Now, if you'll excuse me. John. Yes, I'm here. I know what you're thinking. I do. I'm aware of that, old friend. But let's not do this telepathically. You won't stay focused. Do you see that big man over there with the tuxedo and the vapid grin on his face? C Captain Marvel. That's what you have to tell me. Focus on him and talk to me. Just relax and talk. Spectre, who is that with Batman? He looks so plain, so ordinary among all these costumed metahumans. In this form, he is an everyman. Someone who so desperately longed to understand the human psyche that he finally, in one terrible moment, opened his mind to the world and was forever shattered by its thoughts. Once he was John Jones, the Martian Manhunter. Now he is not much of anything. John, can you verify? Use your telepathy. I uh, will attempt. No, no, too much noise. Too much. Shh, it, oh no, it's okay, John. What, what now? I want to stay. I want to m m matter. I... You don't think I'll help? John, you fought the good fight longer than any of us. You've done all that's ever been asked of you, and today was no exception. You've paid your dues, old friend. Go home and rest. Dream of red sands and silent stars. Spectre, what does Batman mean? All things in their time, Norman McKay. The Batman's plans will unfold. In the meantime, observe the object of his interests. Captain Marvel? He's wandering through the crowd of Batman's metahumans. His eerie grin cuts a swath through Batman's ranks. They look nervous, afraid of him. Nobody breathes. What is he thinking, they wonder? What will he do next? To them, he is a shark trawling for prawn. I've heard him call the world's mightiest mortal. <laughs> now I believe it. The intimidation his mere presence causes is uncanny. The only other metahuman I can think of who causes this kind of disturbance is... Superman, we're ready to continue your update. You ready to use your telescopic vision? All right, Diana. I'll continue scanning the planet. Uh, Germany is all clear. Check. Austria looks clear. Italy. Check. Metahuman activity has been abolished in Europe. Moving on to Africa? Red Robin. Did you say Von Bach dropped a building on you? Yes. Put Power Woman and me both in body casts. Red Robin's not kidding. I still heard so much power. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Listen, I'm with you guys. I was all for the gulag, but throwing Von Bach into that cauldron is like poking a hydrogen balloon with a match. Superman's prison is pressure cooker enough as it is. He thinks he can get everyone to behave like they did when times were brighter. But even he can't turn back the clock. So tell him. Me? Now, via you, tell him. Or maybe someone like the Flash here should do it. Are you suggesting I do some fast talking? Very funny. Look at him. Can't a man with telescopic vision see the world around him? He can hear you. I listen in on their conversation, and what happens next is, for the first time, my fault. I have overheard the Flash described as a man too fast to be contained by one plane of existence. Apparently, entire strata of reality are open to him. So settled am I in my role as a spirit that I have forgotten that fact. Intruder, who are you? How'd you get in here? Help me now, hurry! Oh. Ah. What the? Flash, where'd he come from? He was between dimensions, standing just outside of time and space. You, who are you? Where'd you come from? 
Answer me, or I'll rip... Ease off, power woman. S Superman. Well? I... I... My, my name is Norman McKay, and I've been... I'm supposed to... This isn't going to make any sense. Please understand. A, a catastrophe comes. I see armies raised against you. I, I warn you. Warn? Me? He glares with X-ray eyes, looking for meaning in my babble as my mouth goes dry. I can find no words except for those I myself have heard. And the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all the green grass was burnt up, and the sun and the air were darkened. Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. Who is he, man? He must have come here. He's I don't understand a word he's saying. Listen to me. I don't know who you are or where you've come from, but your words are meaningless. Armageddon is hardly on our agenda. These are grim days, but we have matters fully under... Holy God! Word just came in from the Gulag. There's a riot going on. The prisoners have gone berserk. Superman? What should we... Flash, Green Lantern, Power Woman, to the Gulag, take control. <laughs> Through peaceful means. By whatever means necessary. Ray, Phoebus, be ready to follow his calls. Norman McKay. Listen to me. I don't know who you are or where you've come from, but your words are meaningless. Armageddon is hardly on our agenda. These are grim days, but we have matters fully under... Holy God! Word just came in from the Gulag. There's a riot going on. The prisoners have gone berserk. Superman? What should we... Flash, Green Lantern, Power Woman, to the Gulag, take control. <laughs> Through peaceful means. By whatever means necessary. Ray, Phoebus, be ready to follow his calls. Norman McKay, you are finished here. No, not quite. Superman, where did the old man go? Who was he? I don't know. Why did you undermine my authority? Why did I... I saw a crisis. I reacted in a confident and unqualified manner. The others need to see that sort of authority from someone. Pull yourself together, Cal. We're overdue for a meeting with the United Nations. They can't help but know about the Gulag by now. Then I guarantee they're wondering when we started making up our own laws. Well, 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 Superman! And Wonder Woman, how gracious of you to be here. We're flattered that the mighty Justice League has finally deemed the human race worthy of conversation. There's no need for sarcasm, Secretary General Wormwood. Forgive me. We're simply no longer accustomed to being advised or consulted. Imagine our surprise, for instance, to learn that the center of the United States now harbors a metahuman prison. Mr. Secretary General. Your people insist that, hard as this is to believe, it poses no prevailing danger. Mr. Secretary. That those incarcerated are fully docile and eager to acclimate. Is that true, Superman? Not entirely. The Gulag is a work in progress. The League must find a way to guide those who insist upon working against the common good. I admit to some danger, but I chose to put the renegades together where we can monitor them and teach them. Inside a giant powder keg. Superman, the confidence and hope your reemergence engendered is fast eroding. Global economy is still catastrophic, world trauma staggering. We will not risk another Kansas, I can promise you that. Meaning? Meaning that we must begin to decide some things for ourselves. Good day. Stop looking stunned, Cal. Do you honestly believe they'll sit back and let us solve the problem at our leisure? They should trust us to do what's right. They're scared. And their fears may soon trump our solutions. We have to act. Diana. Cal, whether you like it or not, you're a world leader. And the League is getting tired of waiting for you to grow into that role. As far as I'm concerned, if the situation with the Gulag prisoners gets one micron worse, the League will be forced to take a final, decisive action. So, what's going on, Bax? 
Jones. I see that all of Luthor's people are here. There's Shufash, Lord Naga, Vandal Savage, King, and Selina Kyle, and the Edward Nigma. Are we finally going to see some action? I have the same question, Oliver. All right, Luther. My people are assembled. Why did you call this meeting? I have excellent news. The moment has come to begin our final strike. The gulag is in turmoil. The inmates are, dare I say it, revolting. Superman's prison has become a cauldron of hate and chaos. That's our cue to deploy our steel legion. But not before someone tips that scalding cauldron right onto the Justice League. And that someone is my marvelous companion here. Huh? Me? But, but all our talks. It's as I've always said. The superhumans are evil. You can't argue with that. But only you can ensure their destruction. I'm ordering you to demolish the gulag so that its prisoners roam free. Free and angry and easily eradicated in a war that no one can win except for us. No, Mr. Luther. No, I, I can't... Do it and worry no more about losing control. You won't, my young friend. I've seen to that. Go ahead. Tumble down the walls of Jericho. I insist. Sh Shazam! Hello, Billy. Sh Shazam! No, Billy, don't get up. And sorry for putting my foot on your throat, but I'm afraid I can't let you get a word in. Especially not that word. What? He he's not... You're kidding me. All this time we've been in mortal fear of Billy Batson? I'd suspected it for a while, and John's telepathic probe confirmed it. This isn't Captain Marvel, at least not until he says his magic word. It's Billy Batson, all grown up. But it seems that Marvel's dual identities are in quite a bit of mental conflict. All these years, as Billy Batson grew to manhood, Luther kept him in check by turning him into a stew of schizophrenic psychoses. But, but, but our goals! My only goal in allying with you was to learn your connection to Captain Marvel. In this entire global conflict, he was the wild card. And I hate wild cards. Mm. You double-crossed me first. I learned from you. Uh, then may I assume you've given the signal? Absolutely. Strike. <laughs> no! Head, follow Luther. Don't let him get away. Right, Batman. Just stay right there, Billy. That little tranquilizer that will make this whole affair seem like a bad dream. Uh, I'd like to have seen him try that throw 20 years ago. Oliver, take command of the team. I'm going after Billy. <laughs> Luthor, you can't get away. No, no, I won't be caught. <laughs> Certainly not by someone who calls himself the Blue Beetle. And there's no use hiding in the factory where we're building the Bat Knights. We'll search every inch of it if we have to. No, I won't be stopped. There you are. Bat Knights activated. Target captured. Now let's hope Batman has done as well with... Billy! Stop! Leave me alone! Billy, there's no need to hide. You don't have to run anymore. I figured out what Luther did to you. Captain Marvel retired early, didn't he, Billy? Of all of us, he had the hardest time adapting to the grim new world around him. One day, he spoke his magic word for the last time and vanished inside a scared little boy. Then Luther found you, took you under his wing, told you the same thing the world was telling you, that superheroes were monsters, terrible, repulsive beasts. And he never, ever let you forget that you had one hiding deep down inside you. Don't think like that, Billy. He's twisted your brain around that insanity. The worms, the worms that he grew right here in this factory. They're engineered to secrete certain chemicals. 
Billy or Marvel, either one, they eat away at your mind. No! Billy, wait. They're driving you mad. Don't let that happen. The world depends on it. You can fight. Billy, look, Billy, look out. You're headed right for that glass container. Oh, ah, oh, oh, worms. I'm covered in the worms. Ah, ah. Billy, no, no, stay calm. I can help. Stay calm. Shazam! Damn. Batman, are you all right? For the moment. What about Luther and his men? Are they accounted for? In custody. Everyone. What about Marvel? No longer a wild card. Unfortunately. He's still in Luther's thrall. God help us. Where's Zatara the magician? Here, Batman. Time to put your magic to good use. Take me to the cave. Now. Batman, are you all right? For the moment. What about Luther and his men? Are they accounted for? In custody. Everyone. What about Marvel? No longer a wild card. Unfortunately. He's still in Luther's thrall. God help us. Where's Zatara the magician? Here, Batman. Time to put your magic to good use. Take me to the cave. Now. <laughs> Spectre, they're gone. Yes, the Batman has made his move. His plan might have turned the tide, but he succeeded only in part. What happens now? Our scene shifts to Green Lantern's orbital satellite, where we continue to observe. Diana? Cal, come in. I was just changing. Into a suit of gold and armor? This is yet another side of you I'm not comfortable with. Get used to this one. A soldier unprepared has no business calling herself a soldier. More Amazonian wisdom. And I suppose you'll dispense your wisdom with this battle sword. Isn't it possible that we've already won the big fight? Once the rioters are calmed, we can still... Oh! This sword, it, it, it cut me. That's impossible. You always were a bit vulnerable to magic. Be careful. That sword was a gift from the god Hephaestus. It can carve the electrons off an atom. And you expect to use it? I expect to be a soldier. I will not sanction the use of lethal force against the rioters. I'm uneasy with the blade. Not all of us have heat vision. Diana, there are lines we do not cross. We have rules. And the prisoners don't. That's why they're prisoners. And if they don't remain prisoners, your big blue marble teeters on the brink. You made the decision to incarcerate them for the good of humankind, remember? And maybe that was my mistake. Maybe I should have let the humans decide how to... Can you hear me? For the love of God, can you hear me? Can anyone hear me? By the gods! A hologram of Green Lantern. He's covered with blood. We're, we're in trouble. The fight at the Gulag goes worse than we expected. The prisoners have already begun to breach the walls. They can't hold much longer. Nor can we. They've already... They've killed Captain Comet. No. Comet. Gone. Just like that. How could they... So, your world's finally turned completely topsy-turvy. How do we handle this? I don't know. Then I do. We're going to confront the prisoners and give them an ultimatum. They must surrender. And if they refuse? Then... It's war. But you can't have a war without people dying. Her lips brush his with the sound of marble scraping steel. It's a kiss completely devoid of passion. Goodbye, Cal. Red Robin, take Avia, Alloy, and Our Man with the first wave. I see Superman watch as his lieutenant takes command, gathering a legion of heroes to her side. Let's move! Until Superman ends where he began. Alone. Only the Spectre's powers allow us to follow as the last son of Krypton shatters the walls of a satellite and hurtles toward the Earth. Nothing will keep him from his destination, not even the planet itself. Instead of circling the globe, he pierces it, driving through the crust of the Earth. Through the bedrock of its mantle, through its molten core. 
and back through the mantle, the crust to the surface. A split second later, beside the one man who might still help. Bruce. Warning. Bat cave perimeter has been compromised. Warning. Bruce, I need your help. We've been through this already. Shut up. I don't have time for your holier-than-thou cracks. You're not above all this. Not now. Not with the stakes this high. We're racing the end of the world, Bruce. I've got a half-second lead, but by all the stars in heaven, that's not nearly enough. The gulag's ready to blow. Yes. Even as we speak, Wonder Woman and the League stand outside its walls, ready to bring them down around everyone inside. Attention, prisoners. This is the Justice League. This will be your only warning. Abandon your activities and surrender, or face the consequences. Superman, you mean to tell me you never imagined it might come to this? Did you ever consider that a war might be for the best? That perhaps humanity's only chance is for the superhumans to swallow each other? Don't give me that. The deliberate taking of human, even superhuman life, goes against every belief I have. And that you have. That's the one thing we've always had in common. It's what made us what we are. More than any one in the world. When you scratch everything else away from Batman, you're left with someone who doesn't want to see anybody die. But we can still intercede. Gather your forces. Together we can be the world's finest team. Tell me you'll help me. I will tell you this one thing. There is a player you haven't counted on. Captain Marvel. Marvel? He's been brainwashed. Severely. Once there was a good kid inside him, but he's been driven out, and I don't know how you'd ever find him again. Marvel's headed for the Gulag, Clark. He's going to break it wide open onto the Justice League. What do you expect me to do against... Clark? Clark? Gone. Huh. So that's what it feels like. Wonder Woman, it's starting to rain, and that will slow down some of our fighters. We can't worry about that now, Robin. But the lightning's coming awfully close. Without a word, the specter opens all horizons to me at once. I see the Justice League gathered outside the walls of the Gulag. I see the air scorch in Superman's wake as he streaks across the continent. <laughs> I see the dawning horror in Wonder Woman's eyes. Wonder Woman, the lightning! It's going to hit! <laughs> I see the apocalypse at last unfold. Brace yourselves! They're coming! And worst of all... I see the desperate hopes of the one man who might yet stop it. Look! Up in the sky! It's Superman! Turn to ash and cinders. By a single bolt of lightning. Suzanne! Armageddon has arrived. There were voices, and thunderings, and lightnings, and an earthquake. This was my dream. The dream had become real. And what I took for thunder was the sound of mighty blows exchanged by titans. Superman was faster than a speeding bullet, but his enemy rode on a lightning bolt. Captain Marvel had come. Spectre, it's happening, just as the visions foretold. Superman came too late. War has begun. Spectre, for the love of God, make it stop. I cannot the cave. I can take no action. Well, why not? What in God's name has to happen? The superhumans are on a rampage, and the Justice League is only adding to the violence. How much time must pass? There will be a reckoning, Norman McKay. Be prepared. As the scriptures say, fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. 
Is that the only reason I'm here to watch some hideous judgment? But I'm terrified. Even Superman is terrified. Look at him. His face is a mask of confusion, while the face of Captain Marvel seems frozen in an eerie, mindless grin. I recognize the fear in Superman's eyes. Not much different than the look of fear in the eyes of my congregation. He can't comprehend how things came to this, especially since Captain Marvel was one of his mightiest allies. Damn it, Marvel, snap out of it. You can't do this. We have to work together. <laughs> the only sound he makes is a childish giggle. Whatever wisdom Marvel once possessed has been dulled by Lex Luthor's brainwashing, making the captain a soldier of chaos, the one warrior who can counter Superman's every move and prevent him from containing the battle. Superman believes himself the only force on Earth powerful enough to end the conflict. He is wrong. Ladies and gentlemen of the General Assembly, please come to order. Spectre, what? why have you taken us back to the United Nations building? Get us back to the battle. I have, I have taken, taken you into, into the, the dark heart, heart of the matter, Norma McKay. Attend. Ladies and gentlemen, come to order. Now, what you see on the view screen before you are the blueprints to three multi-megaton nuclear warheads held in reserve for just this moment. Take a good look at the last hope of humanity. General Secretary Wormwood, what are you suggesting? I'm suggesting we initiate Operation Holy Martyrs. Each of these bombs, codenamed Abraham, Martin, and John, is capable of vaporizing a county. Sheathed in a force field unbreachable by all cataloged metahuman powers. Deployment system virtually undetectable. All our projections estimate that one will do the job. As Secretary General of the United Nations, I am empowered to sanction the use of all four. This is unacceptable! It's the most civilian casualties! There must be another way! Your honor, don't let them do this! Your honor, don't madness! Listen to me and understand. There is nothing rational about dispatching tactical nukes into the heart of my own country. But these are not rational times. We are at the flashpoint of human existence. My God, you can hear the battle even here. At any moment, it threatens to spread forth and engulf the world. What then? What then? Colonel Chan? Black Hawk Squadron, fueled and ready, sir. Ladies and gentlemen of the delegation, you are looking at the three best pilots the world can muster. They will be flying Black Hawk bombers, the most advanced aircraft known to humanity. Pray that it is enough. The only way to ensure that future generations remember this is humanity's final option is to ensure there will be future generations after today. Let us strike while we can. Colonel Chan, Godspeed. Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman. Here, Robin. There you are. With all the energy beams kicking up smoke and dust, you can cut the air with a battering. How goes the battle on your end? Not well. We have the raw strength to match the inmates, but we're outnumbered. Worst of all, the walls of the Gulag have crumpled. We're trying to contain the renegades, but there's no place to contain them. We've got to keep trying. We've got to... Look out! <laughs> it's Manator! Don't worry, Robin. Manator is mine. Thanks, Power Woman, because I see that someone else has taken an interest in me. Robin! Hello again, Tokyo Rose. Didn't you learn your lesson the last time we met? The cut rose blooms brighter than before, boy wonder. This time I will not underestimate your... Oh. Sorry, Rose, but if there's one thing I learned from my mentor, it's that you never give them a second chance. Hey! You cut down Tokyo Rose! Who's next? All right, Gramps. Let's see if you can do the same with 666. Yeah! Ah, who fights me? Who will face for the box? Earth will fall down before my... <laughs> Nice shot, Ray. That's Shuck Von Bakup. 
But only for a minute, Green Lantern. I'm not sure anything can bring that madman down. Superman can, but where is he? Oh, I don't have time for this anymore, Marvel. Your punches knocked me off my feet, but they're not going to hurt me. Oh, I think it's time I upped the ante. Let's see how you do against Heat Vision. Ah! There, maybe that will help you snap out of it. In the name of heaven, Marvel, wipe that empty smile off your face. You were a friend once. How can you do this? Ow! Look at the horror you've let loose. Well, damn it, say something for yourself. Lightning bolt. He used super speed to dodge the lightning bolt. Instead of changing him back into Billy Batson, it hit me. But lightning shouldn't hurt me. Unless... Unless it's magic. Shazam! Ah! Shazam! Ah! Spectre Superman is down. You've got to help. My time is not yet come. Look at what's happening. This isn't a fight that will eventually die down. This is a forest fire that's just begun. A war that may well be the end of the world. If this keeps up, someone is going to die. And there'll be no way to turn back. True, Norman McCain. One might say that with Superman deadlocked, the superhuman's only prayer of deliverance rests. With a force from on high. Is that... Yes, the Batman has come, and he's brought an army with him. Nightstar, Jade, Kid Flash, I want a reconnaissance of the battlefield. Now, Ted. It's the Blue Beetle again, Batman. All right. Blue Beetle, take command of the Batlines. Order all the robots to engage. The rest of you, fan out and try to separate the combatants. What about you, Batman? Nightstar, I think it's time I tested out this new battle armor. Computer. Battlesuit computer activated. Battle mode. Now. Weapon systems online. Tracking systems online. Flight systems online. Batman's legion soars in like a silent cavalry. Man or machine, each agent knows his mission. Stem the loss of life. I don't know who you are or where you came from, but you better hope that fancy suit packs a fire extinguisher. It's made of fire-resistant Nomex, Phoebus. You see, I know you. I've done my homework on you and all your friends. I know how hot your flame burns, and I know how to put it out. Locking weapons on target. By the way. Firing tear gas grenade. I'm Batman. Target neutralized. The sheer force of Batman's presence kindles a desperate ember of hope. Green Lantern, Batman has arrived. He brought 136 individuals with him. He decided to join our fight. This could be the starting point. Flash, I can't understand you when you talk that fast. Robin, did you get what he... I think he said things are looking up. With Batman here, we just might save the day. Right. I'm going aloft to get a better view of the battle. Roger, if you see 666, give me a signal. We got separated by the fighting, and I still want a piece of that black armored bat. Ah! Who will be next to face Von Bach? Bat Knight Unit 12 encountering metahuman codenamed Von Bach, requesting assistance from other units. Scanners indicate Von Bach's power exceeds this unit's foul. Ah! This robot darkness makes a fine weapon with which to crush the Justice League, and you will be my next victim. No, no! Tell me your name, boy. I want to know who I have killed. The Tara, the magician. Help! Batman, help! It's a fine weapon with which to crush the Justice League, and you will be my next victim. No, no! Tell me your name, boy. I want to know who I have killed. The Zatara, the magician. Help! Batman, help! On my way, Zatara. Von Bach, back off. 
Wonderful. You will be the truth of this. I will crush the magic out of this. No, you won't. Diana, you stabbed him through the chest. He left me no choice. One of the others, one of your people would have died otherwise. Diana! They began this. I will finish it. Did you see that? She killed him! She killed Von Bach! Get her! Get her! Get out! Be quiet, child. We don't kill. We'll finish this without you, Bruce. Your people are out of their league. Why? Because we're here to save lives rather than take them? We're here to force peace. We're left with no choice. If you stand in the way, I will remove you. Force peace. The Amazon tenant. Spread love and understanding, but don't be afraid to bloody your knuckles doing it. Don't tell me you still subscribe to that paradox. I do what a warrior must. I've heard rumors that the Amazons relieved you of your duties and heritage for not being strident enough. Face the truth, Diana. You won't win back your royal station by overcompensating. You aristocratic bastard! How dare you condemn me! Yeah. The princess accuses me of being patrician. I'm cut to the quick. I will not be judged by you. After all these years, you have the nerve to swagger out of your cave and expect everyone to bow before your precious wisdom. Well, it's too late for that, Bruce. Mm. Bruce! Bruce! Dad! Nightstar, have you seen Bruce? He just took off into the sky with Wonder Woman. It, it, it looked like they were fighting. Damn, I wanted to talk to him. Dad, or should I call you Robin when you're in costume? This is no time for jokes, Nightstar, considering we're on opposing teams here. I'm not against you, Dad. You didn't join me either, and there's no time to argue now. That's why I have to say this now, before things get any worse. Dad, I think we've chosen different methods, but we both want peace. Isn't that touching? Six, six, six. Yeah, Birdman. I wanted another shot at that wonder hag, but you'll do. <laughs> Dad! Looks like your old man's gotten his wings clipped. That's what he gets for holding back and playing by old-fashioned rules. He might fix, but I don't. Night Star! Dad, Dad, are you? Uh, head wound. Probably concussion. Should have seen it coming. Must be getting old. No, but you're definitely getting out of here now. You can't block these sword thrusts forever, Bruce. The sky is more my element than yours. You don't want to kill me, Diana. <clears throat> Look at the chaos you've caused already. We tried to hold order, damn you. But it's too far gone. Our only answer now is... By the gods. What is that? Open your eyes, Diana. You questioned how best to end this battle. Your answer flies on metal wings. Those are Blackhawks. Nuclear carriers, the ultimate war bringers. Our war is not one act of violence at the cost of some lives. Our war ends in extinction. If you're that devoted to the Amazon honor, if your soul genuinely longs for atonement on Amazonian terms, then let's keep fighting and let the planes do their work. I... we... let's go. I alone, among all humanity, witness the heroism that follows as Batman and Wonder Woman race toward the three approaching jets. Despite my spectral form, I feel the heat of Batman's lasers as they melt one nuclear bomb to its frame. I feel the strain of titanium muscles as Wonder Woman cripples the second. I see them both watch in horror as the final aircraft hurtles beyond their reach. I hear the bomb bay doors open. I hear the whisper of a pilot begging forgiveness over the sound of distant thunder. Uh, can't take much more. Shazam! Uh, enough! I guess what Superman will do a moment before it happens. <laughs> Shazam! Enough! 
Faster than the eye can follow, Superman's hand lashes out, clutching at Captain Marvel, holding him in place as the lightning strikes. And when the dust settles, the Man of Steel holds Billy Batson in his grip, one hand clamped over the young man's mouth. For one frozen instant, the storm clears. Fingers that can fuse coal into diamond crawl across human bone. And in the hush, ears that can hear a cell divide pick out with chilling ease the scream of human rage. A wave of x-rays confirms the bomb's potency. A telescopic glance calculates the seconds before impact. He must act now. Norman McKay, it is time. Spectre, what? Judgment, Judgment has come, come, Norman McKay. The hour told us. Our entire journey has brought us to this moment. But the bomb, the bomb! Will determine the fate of the world if it drops. The superhumans will surely die, but humanity will be spared their violence. If not, they will live on to fight a battle that will, in time, swallow the earth. Maybe heat vision will stop it. No good, it's shielded somehow. In either case, we face the evil of genocide. And my task is to punish those responsible for evil. But who shall be held accountable? Whose sin is this? The humans? Or the superhumans? Tell me, Norman McKay. Judge. Me? Yours is the soul that guides me. Well, how can I? There, There is no evil here. There is tragedy and bedlam and... Judge carefully. I don't know what to do. You can see that, can't you, Billy? Every choice I've made so far has brought us here, has been wrong. So listen to me, Billy. Listen harder than you ever have before. Look around us. Look at what we've come to. There's a bomb falling. Either it kills us or we run rampant across the globe. I can still stop the bomb, Billy. That much I'm sure of. What I don't know is whether I should be allowed to. It's the superhumans or mankind. One will pay the ultimate price. And the decision is not for me to make. I'm not a god. I'm not a man, but you, Billy, you're, you're both. More than anyone who ever existed, you know what it's like to live in both worlds. Only you can weigh their worth equally. Fight the brainwashing, Billy. You can let me go, or with a word, you can stop me. Do you understand the choice that can be made by you alone? A tear escapes from Billy Batson's eye. It answers for him. Then decide. Decide the world. As Superman streaks away, I see the look of fear on Billy Batson's face. Not fear of death, but fear of life. Fear of his own life. And looking at him, I hear the words of Wesley Dodds once more. And when he cries, Shazam. Seven thunders utter their voices. I see the lightning strike. I see the young man transformed once again into Earth's mightiest mortal. <sighs> Billy Batson had spoken his magic word. In a flash of red, he speeds off into the skies after Superman. Marvel, no! With strength drawn from somewhere beyond even the power of magic, Marvel hurls the Man of Steel back to Earth. Oh. And streaks upward. Superman, are you? I'll live. Where's Marvel? He's up there. He's reached the bomb, but he can't penetrate the force field. I've got to help him. But once again, Superman is too late. Marvel has made his decision. Shazam! 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 Are you? I'll live. Where's Marvel? He's up there. 
He's reached the bomb, but he can't penetrate the force field. I've got to help him. But once again, Superman is too late. Marvel has made his decision. Shazam! 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 The nuclear blast is loud enough to deafen my spectral ears. The flash is bright enough to blind my non-existent eyes. Though untouchable, I cringe as the shockwave passes through me. I shiver not from pain, but from the cold touch of death. For as the shockwave moves, it gathers up the spirits of the superhumans it has killed. And it has killed them by the hundreds. When my sight finally returns, I think for a moment that I'm in heaven. Everything around me is white and silent, but I soon realize that the whiteness is the dust of Kansas, blown into the air and bleached white by the violence of a nuclear reaction. The silence is the silence of death. All around me lie the blasted skeletons of fallen superhumans, the flesh torn from their bones, the atoms of their unspeakable power now scattered across the horizon. I am shaken to the core of my being. Norman McKay. They're gone. All of them. Not all. No. Superman survived the blast. But why? Why did this happen? Judgment. No! no! <sighs> He's leaving. But where? Almost certainly to confront his human attackers. He feels completely alone. He need not look. <laughs> I see more superhumans behind some sort of green barrier. Green Lantern, Flash, Magog is there too, and others. There were survivors. Those such as Green Lantern with the power to shield those around them from the blast. They are fewer in number, and their pain is great. But their war is over. Judgment has been passed. I am no longer needed. Farewell, Norman McKay. Farewell? Farewell? You think you brought me all this way just to watch people die? Well, think again. You want to confront evil, then get us to the UN now. You saw Superman. You saw an anger that could twist steel. If what happens next happens the only way it can, and you let it, then that is evil. Very well. The United Nations. God, Superman's bringing the roof down. He's going to kill them. Somebody's got to do something. After ten years, he has finally let free of wrath that would cower Satan himself. How can any man possibly calm the fury he feels towards his treasure? I can reach behind it. Do you really think he's mad at them? He's raging in himself. Spectre, use your powers. Let me talk to him now. Clark! Clark, don't. You blame yourself for Captain Marvel, for Magog and Kansas, for ten years that ended today. Yes, you're angry, but in that anger, you're forgetting once more what humans feel, what they fear. They won't forgive you for this, Clark. Forgive yourself. You? Who are... Why are you here? To bear witness. Listen to me, Clark. Of all the things you can do, all your powers, the greatest has always been your instinctive knowledge of right and wrong. It was a gift of your own humanity. You never had to question your choices in any situation, any crisis. You knew what to do. But the minute you made the super more important than the man, the day you decided to turn your back on mankind, that completely cost you your instinct. That took your judgment away. Take it back. If you want redemption, Clark, it lies in the very next decision you make. 
Make it as a man. Make it right. Superman. Cal. Survivors, how? With his dying breath, Captain Marvel managed to detonate the bomb high above ground zero. Thanks to that, and the combined powers of Green Lantern and others, there were survivors. How many? Enough to leave us with the same problem as before. The same impasse. The same dangers. The same distrust. The same everything. What now? Now we put things right. Where is Secretary General Wormwood? Here, Superman! Years ago, I let those I swore to protect drive me away. We all did. And that was the day all of this began. We... we saw you as gods. As we saw ourselves. We were both wrong. But I no longer care about the mistakes of yesterday. I care about coping with tomorrow together. What do you intend to do? The problems we face still exist. And we're not going to solve them for you. We're going to solve them with you. Not by ruling above you, but by living among you. We will no longer impose our power on humanity. We will earn your trust. Let it begin here, now, with my one secret. You should know that for years I moved through Metropolis under another name. A name many of you knew. I was a man named Clark. Clark Kent. As Clark, I was a rather ordinary man living in Metropolis. I had a job and responsibilities and a wife. Her name was Lois Lane. She taught me more about being human than anyone I've ever known. It was a lesson I seem to have forgotten. Less than an hour ago, I asked Captain Marvel to choose between humans and superhumans. But he alone knew that was a false division and made the only choice that ever truly matters. He chose life and he gave his own to make certain we understood that. Now there is nothing left of him but the memory of just how important his sacrifice was. There's also this, Superman. Magog, you have something to say? Yes, sir. I found this on the battlefield. It looks like... Captain Marvel's cape. When he flew after you, his cape was torn away in the struggle and fell near the energy shield Green Lantern had created. Magog's telling the truth, Cal. My daughter Jade and I were focusing on keeping the shield up, but Magog demanded we open a hole so he could run out and get the cape. He risked his life for that piece of cloth. Magog, why? I thought... When I saw what Captain Marvel was going to do, I... I thought that something ought to survive. I couldn't bear to have one more voice added to the millions. Magog, well done. This cape will make a fitting banner. Secretary General Wormwood? Yes, Superman? Magog has kindly supplied the metahumans with a flag, a symbol of our new nation. A nation of metahumans? One which, respectfully, Request permission to join the United Nations. I believe your application will be approved. Then, with your permission, I'd like to fly Captain Marvel's cape as our new banner with the flags of the other nations immediately. Certainly. Let me call the color guard. They can raise the flag for you. That won't be necessary. <laughs> Spectre, is that... is that it? Very nearly, Norman McKay. I feel time fold forward. The visions and the voices that have plagued me for so long now fade. I watch great powers reconstruct a once stately manor into a hospital, patrolled by a man who has traded black garb for white. Bruce Wayne throws open wide the doors of his once well-guarded home, filling its halls with the victims of the nuclear blast. Under his watch, survivors ravaged by the effects of the bomb are nurtured and cared for, while those who help bring about the cataclysm suffer their own unique justice. Luther! Luther! Get to work. Have you seen my assignment, deadpans? I am Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor does not wash bedpans. Well, apparently he does. Oh, and Luther. Yes? Shazam. Ah, oh, shut up! 
Across the world, new roles are embraced, new alliances forged. Ladies and gentlemen of the delegation, may I present our newest member, Alan Scott, representing New OA, the metahuman community. After far too long a time, the gods have chosen to work with mankind towards a common good. Only one. After far too long a time, the gods have chosen to work with mankind towards a common good. Only one works alone. Hello, Diana. There's still no sneaking up on you, Cal. Actually, I was distracted. I didn't hear you until you were only a few miles away. You're becoming a regular farmer. You even look the part in those clothes. I am a farmer, just like my dad. And you, you've given up the Wonder Woman costume for that red robe. Temporarily. For the moment, I'm a teacher, working with the surviving metahumans, trying to show them how to temper their power with grace. They could have no better example. And this red robe is the one I wore at my coronation. Coronation? The Amazons have returned my birthright to me. I am a princess once again. Congratulations, uh, your highness. I think you deserve the congratulations, Cal. It's amazing what you've done with the Kansas landscape so far. The white stone markers you're putting up, they go on for miles. From the sky, it looks so peaceful. It's quite a memorial. As it should be. Not just for those claimed by the bomb, but for all those here who lost their lives to our mistakes. Let them rest in peace, Cal. They'll only haunt you if you forget what they taught you. Even Magog was able to see that. And speaking of seeing, I've got something for you. Mm, what's in the box? A gift. A little something to help you see more clearly. <laughs> Glasses. <laughs> and the favorite wire-rimmed style of a former Daily Planet journalist, too. Try them on. Well, give me the report. How do I look? Positively mild-mannered. <laughs> <laughs> Cal, I... Diana, please. Call me Clark. But I thought you had given I up. I did, I did. But to the people closest to me, the ones in my heart, it's always been Clark. Clark, I... I was just going to say that I have to leave. I have my duties. Oh, as do I. But will I see you again soon? Yes, soon. Take care, Clark. Take care, Diana. <laughs> All the sins have been exposed, Spectre. Tell me, in the end, who do you punish? Who is responsible for what happened? No one needs suffer any further for the tragedies we have witnessed, Norman McKay. Do not mock me. I'm not. I'm merely wondering, when you first appeared before me, you said you needed a human soul to be your anchor. And yet, you yourself were once an ordinary man named Jim Corrigan. Tell me, what would his perspective have been? An interesting question. I am no longer sure what Jim Corrigan would have said to the tragedy, but I know he would say this to you now. Be well, Norman McKay. You have watched the Titans walk the Earth, and you have kept stride. Perhaps you are more like them than you realize. The Lord God sent his angel to show his servants and so the crisis passes. There is no grand celebration. There is too much pain to be forgotten. Too much rebuilding to master. But there is faith. And so, though my visions no longer plague me, I preach lessons they have taught me. That a dream is not always a prophecy. That the future, like so much else, is open to interpretation. And that hope is brightest when it dawns from fear. Grace be with you all. Amen. Good afternoon, citizens. Welcome to the planet Krypton. How may I serve you? Uh... There will be three of us for lunch. Great. I can seat you now, or would you like to wait for your third? Who are you supposed to be? You can seat us now. 
I'm Superman, can't you tell? Mm. Be nice, Clark. Right this way. How's this table? Uh, could we have a, a different table? I'm not really comfortable with this one. Too close to the air conditioning? No, the kryptonite. How about that one? No problemo. There you are. Your waiter will be right with you. <laughs> What's wrong? You don't find any of this uh, unsettling? It's in the upbringing. I'm accustomed to seeing mortals pay tribute to the gods. But if there's anything we've learned about playing god... It's not a church, Clark. It's a restaurant. Relax. So, uh, where is he? You're the one with x-ray vision. Did you look behind the giant penny? You didn't tell him, did you? Of course not. If it actually means seeing him surprised, who am I to hoard the moment? It's awfully crowded. Y you sure we won't be recognized? Hardly likely. In the first place, you wrote the book on secret identities. And in the second place, amidst all this tawdry bric-a-brac, I doubt they'd take notice of us if we were fighting the Legion of Doom in full costume. Bruce! There you are. You, you snuck up on me. Me, how did you do that? Hello, Clark. Diana. It's good to see you under brighter circumstances, Bruce. How's Dick? It's taken nearly a year, but he's headed for a full recovery. Hi, I'm Robin. Of course you are. I'll be your waiter. May I bring you something to drink? Water's fine. Milk. Coffee. And keep it coming. Tell me, of all the places on Earth and beyond we could have met, why did you choose this one? I didn't. I did. I was curious. The atmosphere is elevating and humbling at the same time. Some of us can always use a little more humility. So I gather from your communique we have business? Here are your drinks. You're sure this coffee's not decaf? Positive. Regular served in a green lantern like that. Decaf comes in a flash flagon. Perfect. We have some things to settle. News to share. You and I haven't spoken much since... Captain Marvel. But before we begin, I think it's appropriate to give a moment to those who fell in battle. We're long overdue. To past friends. To past friends. Yeah, yeah. Are you ready to order? What do you recommend? Well, today's special is the Power Girl Chicken Sandwich. I also recommend the Dial H for Hoagie. I think I'll have the Giant Turtle Soup. Cool. And for you, sir? Do you serve anything like beef bourguignon? There's Starro the Casserole. Uh, fine. I'll have steak. Well done. Which? There's the Man of Beef. There's... Steak. Well done. Okay. Back in a flash. The teaching must be going well, Diana. I can't remember the last time I saw someone destroying the Eiffel Tower on the evening news. It's tough. If the experience of the Gulag showed us anything, it's that students have to want to learn. Clearly, what we went through gave them plenty of incentive. And you, Clark? Still doing your best to restore the agricultural balance? How do you make out with irradiated soil? I have no interest in growing ten-foot carrots. As when we built the gulag, the ray has been a big help in stripping the land of radioactivity. Past that, it's just hard work and patience. I imagine you can relate. It's been a long road to rehabilitation for the injured. Fortunately, I'm not laboring alone. I was able to put several members of the Mankind Liberation Front to work in our hospital. They're pulling their weight. Vandal Savage alone has picked up quite a few healing tricks in his 50,000 years. And you've had no problems? Inhibitor collars keep the rowdier ones subdued. <laughs> Even Luther? He's a different story. I caught him down in the cave twice last month trying to hack the computer. He sends his best. Really? No. <laughs> Here you go. Careful, hot plates. Enjoy! That uh, steak's not very well done. Not a shade over medium. Miss? She disappeared almost as fast as Batman. Here, I'll take care of it. Uh, now it's well done. So don't tell me that's it. We could have compared resumes by phone. We're here solely to play catch-up? Not exactly. We... We have something to announce.
So don't tell me that's it. We could have compared resumes by phone. We're here solely to play catch-up? Not exactly. We... We have something to announce. You're pregnant. How... How did you... Observation. For an ageless Amazon of perfect physique, you've put on a pound or two. That was my first clue. Then there are the two or three gray hairs you've sprouted, and the fact that you're positively glowing. My best to you both. Congratulations on bringing another spit curl demigod into the world. Sorry if I stepped on your denouement, princess. Always the detective, aren't you, Bruce? Now let's test your escape artistry. I want a commitment from you. To be the child's godfather. What? Me? Uh, I don't know what to say. Then the day is full of surprises. This is news to you, I take it. What isn't when it comes to her? Hardly Athena's wisdom at work, Diana. My record as a parent isn't spotless. Bruce, I'll be the first to admit I know little about fatherhood. But I do know this. There are things that the Batman can teach our child that Clark and I can't, that we would never even think of. But we're of such different schools. You and Clark, you rule by trust. I rely on fear. Then let's talk about what we're all most afraid of. Look at the lesson we just learned. Right now, the scales of world power are balanced, but still too easy to tip. Our child, more than any other, will need the leavening influence of a mortal man, a moral man, who we can count on. Are you all right about me? Trust is the center of my world. I don't know if that makes me an expert on it, but I know I trust you. Despite our differences over the years, I always have. Clark, thank you. It's settled then? It's settled. Come on, let's get out of here. You realize you've just handed me influence over the most powerful child in the world. I thought you agreed rather quickly. Have you thought of a name? Bruce is good. I was thinking of Jonathan. You both seem to be convinced it's a boy. The child of Superman and Wonder Woman. And Batman. Imagine what kind of kid he'll... She'll... Be. Battler for truth, justice, and a new American way. I could hardly wait to see it for myself. Let's go home and dream about the future. <laughs>